At City Field in New York, the New York Mets play the San Francisco Giants. Friday Night Baseball is presented by Jeep. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Jeep, now celebrating its 75th anniversary. By Geico, over 75 years of savings and service. By New York Lottery, take a break from the expected, play scratch-off games from the New York Lottery. By Toyota, visit your local Toyota dealer and test drive the all-new RAV4 Hybrid today. Toyota, let's go places. And by Bob's Discount Furniture, shop in-store or online at mybobs.com. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling with you. Keith Hernandez will join us in just a moment as the Mets begin a three-game series against the San Francisco Giants. Good news in the Mets lineup tonight. Ioannis Cespedes back in the lineup. His last start was a week ago in Atlanta with the bruise on his thigh in the interim and a big three-run homer to help the Mets win a game as a pinch hitter. Now the Giants come to town. The Mets have won six straight games, but this is a big time team. Their pitching, which they've been known for, maybe not as good as in past years, but their offense has been superb. Well, first they're pitching. They spent $220 million this offseason on Jeff Samarja and Johnny Cueto. They've done all right so far. Cueto, much better. But you're talking about their offense. Five and one in their last six games. Batting average around 360. On base around 450. Led by Hunter Pence. Hunter Pence is just really starting to get hot. And when he gets hot, he really is the foundation of this team ever since he was traded over here from Houston. Eight legitimate hitters in that lineup, including the former Red Angel Pagan, who's done a fine job hitting in the nine hole for Bruce Bochy so far this year. For the Mets tonight, it's Steven Matz, who has really been able to shake off the effects of that first start of the year against Miami. He's been really good his last two times. Well, I give him a complete mulligan for that first start. He had 10 days off. He was not sharp, but he's come back. And against the Atlanta Braves, he was probably the best he's been. Eight strikes. Strikeouts went right after hitters. Um, the key for Steven is always his control. When his control is fine, his stuff always plays. On the other side for the Padres is the veteran right hander, or for the uh, Giants is the veteran right hander, the former Padre, Jake Peavy, who has had three not so good starts and then a pretty good one his last time out. It was almost nine years ago when he won the Cy Young for the Padres. He is certainly not the gunslinger he once was, but he is still tough as nails, and he's coming off his best start in his last one. That was in Atlanta. Peavy will try and build on that tonight as the Giants come to town for their only visit of the year. Mets and Giants for the first of three. All the action coming your way tonight on SNY. SNY is brought to you by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. Speak with James Fanaro and Beth Page or Stephen Principe in East Meadow today. By Cadillac, visit TristateCadillac.com for exceptional offers. And by Affinity Health Plan, serving the health care needs of New Yorkers for more than 30 years. Follow Mets Baseball Live with the MLB.com at Bat app. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. Closed captioning for Mets Baseball brought to you by Sideline. Now time for a look at the quick and loans rocket arms Mets are third in the major leagues and strikeouts so far this season but that hundred ninety four that has obliterated the franchise record that was one hundred sixty nine strikeouts through the first twenty games of a Mets season that was back in nineteen ninety when a guy named Darling pitched on the staff. <laughs> Now it's Mats and company. Steven makes his fourth start of the year. He's responsible for 18 of those strikeouts. He'll try and rack up a few more tonight against the Giants. First pitch coming up. A close up view of Steven Mats. Well, that really gives you an idea of just how quickly that ball gets on top of you. Yeah, and he's not really rushing it up there for 100% either. Oh, hi, Keith. Hi, how are you? Thanks for joining <laughs> us, Froggy. I don't feel well. <laughs> You don't sound well. I have, every year I get this bronchial thing. You know that. Denard Span leads off against Matt's first pitch of the night. A fastball in for a strike. There's your Hyundai starting lineup for the Giants. With Buster Posey who had a day off Wednesday, so he's had two straight days to get ready for the Mets. He's sitting in the cleanup spot. Span hits the comebacker. Matt's has it. And that's the first down of the night. Matt's good athlete. Jumped all over that. Land Rover stats as Matt's is going to start this game. 
in the rain. Those three starts he gave up seven earned runs in his first inning and two thirds after that only two earned runs in his last 19 and a third. Well, the weather forecast was that it was supposed to start raining lightly about 715 it arrived about five minutes early. You guys have this down to a science you uh, fairly weather people fairly precise. Yes. Here's the St. John's product Joe Panic. And he takes a fastball for a strike. The Giants have got some left hand hitters who've hit lefties awfully well. Panic, one of them, he's hitting 394 against lefties. The Giants have seen a lot of left handed pitching early in the year. This is already their 10th left handed starter they've faced. Belt is the other one who hits lefties pretty well. Gregor Blanco, who's not in the lineup. Panic had a really good year last year, curtailed for the last two months because of a Fracture in his back. He's all better now and off to another good start. Really has established himself in short order as a very valuable second baseman for the Giants. You look one through eight in this order, and a sort of one through eight since they have the pitcher batting eight. There is not a weak spot in this San Francisco right. lineup. And I think Panic is a little bit like the Mets Conforto. I don't think he's as good a hitter as Michael Conforto, but the same knowledge of the strike zone, same balance, lefties or righties don't matter. 2 2 slap down to third giving ground is right he can't make the play and panic is aboard would have been tough for David back on his heels to throw out panic even had he secured it, and then they'll score that a base hit tough in between hop here actually it's a long hop he just missed it he's got it in the glove and just clanked it it happens so a one out infield hit for panic and now Matt Duffy who finished second in the rookie of the year balloting in the National League last year. At 295 with 12 home runs as a rookie. Bruce Bochy moved Duffy up to the three hole last Friday and he's been hitting since he was elevated. Well they've averaged over six runs per game in their last six so the Giants are starting to get hot. They always seem to be hot when they play the Mets right. Well, the Giants have won the season series here at City Field, the one series they play here each year, each of the last five seasons. Of course, three times in the last six years, the Giants have finished the season as World Series champions. And this being an even year, they they probably feel they're due for another one. It makes them dangerous. Duffy takes high. Two and one. That's his fastball, except for the two one to panic, has been a little up in the strike zone. Stephen coming off a no walk, eight strikeout performance over six and a third against Atlanta his last time out. And Duffy fouls off the fastball, two and two. <clears throat> and we'll take a look at your Mets Lexus defense. And everybody's had a day off. Curtis Granderson had 48 hours off. He's out in right field. Walker and Cabrera, they continue to be the only two Mets to play every game this season. Polecki, of course, we're going to see a lot of him with Darno on the DL. Jacob DeGrom, the year he won the Rookie of the Year, who finished second. Billy Hamilton, who finished third. Matt Duffy. Duffy lifts one to right center. Granderson eases over and calls. And that's the second out. So we felt as though we needed to, to show <laughs> that Keith is actually here since he really doesn't sound like Keith. Well, you know, I get this Bronco thing every year. Remember one year, how we want, we were in Milwaukee right. and uh, I, I got pneumonia and Ronnie had to fly in from New York. I had this flight from hell going back through Philadelphia. <laughs> to, to eye slip with 103 fever. Oh gosh. We just like to know how you're treating this ailment. Um, lots of tea, lots of liquids, right? Some usual stuff. I'm no different than anybody else. I don't know. When you used to play, you used to take five at bats through this problem. I would. Uh, yes, I would. <laughs> Absolutely. It was a four for five kind of a night. <laughs> I always had good days when I was sick because I always concentrated more. Buster Posey at the plate with two out and a runner on. Oh, well, I'd be happy to step aside if you anticipate that happening. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, folks. I'll be on my cough button tonight. 
You just take it easy. We're here to pick you up. <laughs> Posey fouls one away, and it's 0 2. Bruce Bochy is committed to resting Buster Posey more this year. He's 29 years old now, still catching most of the time, still plays in first base, but they're trying to get the most they can out of Posey by giving him more off days. The 308 last year. And he grounds one past the mound and into center field for a base hit. Panic pulls in at second. And so Posey able to just sneak one by the glove of Mats for the second hit of the inning. Well, quite the hitter here, and I think really more of a three hitter than a cleanup hitter, but still, he's just one of the best hitters in baseball. And, and he's got the numbers to back it up. And the Mets book there, Ploiecki called for the fastball up. To me, that's not a good pitch on Posey. He shortens up and knows how to hit with two strikes. You never have to say, never say this about right handed hitters, but he has one of the sweetest strokes from the right side you'll see. So Matt's with some first inning trouble to deal with facing the red hot Hunter Pence with two out and two on. Pence who had an injury filled season last year. Has really kicked it in gear the last week. Ten for twenty one over the last six games. Last year he broke his arm when he was hit by a pitch. He had a wrist injury he had an oblique. Wound up playing just fifty two games a guy who generally plays one hundred sixty two. And Matt's just misses two and out. The style is unorthodox, but at the end of the year, the numbers are always there for Pence. Dangerous spot for Matt's behind 2 0. And Pence goes after the high fastball 2 1. Well, he had, if you recall, when he went to Philadelphia from, from Houston, and he's always been a free swinger, and they tried to rein him in. And then the Giants traded for him, and Bruce Bochy pulled him aside and said, Be yourself. And he has just been a terrific player for the Giants. San Francisco is really that kind of place, isn't it? Sandoval had success being himself. Johnny Cueto loves playing there now. He's a new free agent, and of course, Pence has been outstanding. Two out, two on, two and two to Pence. Fouls off that high fastball. That's now 33 years old, just two home runs shy of 200 for his career. Twenty pitch inning already for Mats. Again the 2-2. And he fouls back another fastball. Everything's been up so far, Ronnie. Yep. He had one pitch to panic on 2 1 that was a good fastball in the knees, but other than that, Mats has had trouble. I don't know whether it's the cold weather, the rainy weather, but having trouble getting the ball down. Seventh pitch of the at bat to Pence, and he missed it up and in, three and two. All fastballs, too. No mixing it up so far for the young Mats. So that'll set the runners in motion. Panic at second. Posey at first will be going. Big moment early in this game for Steven Matz. Brandon Belt would be next. 3 2 to Pence. Adam lunging at the changeup and he pops it foul back out of play. You know, this is the uh, first time for almost all of these hitters. To see Steven Matt, so he'll be able to get away with some mistakes maybe early, but they'll pick up on it as he goes. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat to Pence, and he hits it sharply, but right at Cabrera, handles it cleanly, side retire. Two hits, but two left. And, uh, <laughs> well, Keith, we hope he can. What yeah, happened well, to my so. two? <laughs> Jeez, see what happens when you go out with a lane. Make <laughs> a lineup. Duane Assessment is back in the lineup for the first time in a week. That sends Juan Lagares back to the bench. Kevin Pulecki, his third straight start with Travis Darno on the DL. Otherwise, the Mets running their regular lineup out there against Jake Peavy. Well, you see the Toyota, num Toyota numbers. Uh, the, the starting one is the 35 hits in only 21 innings pitched for Jake. 
He's a guy that in his prime was very hard to get three four hits off in a nine inning game. Travis Granderson had most of the day off on Wednesday he did have a pinch hitting assignment. Last 11 games hitting 349 so he has really been cooking as the Mets have gotten hot. It's interesting to see PV now a veteran He's had arm problems he was such a power pitcher with the Padres and now just sinking the ball becoming more of a control pitcher. There's a lot of cutters these days. Rolled down to first and Brandon Belt takes it himself to retire Granderson one away. And the Giants <laughs> Coors Light defense there's our old buddy Angel Pagan in left field with Denard Spann now he's got the center field anchored in there moving Pagan over to left Brandon Belt really an upcoming start first base decent glove over there and of course the perennial all star MVP batting champ behind the Behind the plate, Mr. Posey. Here's David Wright. David, three for 19 in his career against Posey. This is his 14th career start, PV, against the Mets. Well, you take out the pitcher, five of the eight starters for the Mets have taken PV deep. So there is some damage against Jake, but that usually happens when you've been in the league this long. The last time we saw Jake Peavy at City Field was two years ago, and he hooked up with Jacob DeGrom in a memorable game. They both had a no hitter going through six innings. That's right. In fact, Peavy was perfect through six before the Mets got four against him in the seventh and won the game. Three time All Star Cy Young back in 07 with the Padres, and the cutter off the plate. Called and he went around <coughs> two and one. That's the pitch you mentioned Gary that when he's behind he'll go to that pitch he doesn't want to throw the fastball and he got David out front. Jake pitched well against Miami his last start that was last Saturday went seven strong innings gave up two runs that was the last game the Marlins lost. Of course, the Marlins suffered a much bigger loss than a game last night. We'll talk about that in a little bit. 3 1 coming to right, and it's off the plate. A 3 1 cutter that misses, and Wright's aboard with a one out walk. That's 12 walks that David's drawn this year, the most on the team. See, he's on the side of that baseball. That's what makes it cut. All that pressure on the outside part cuts across the plate, and despite the tracking there by Posey out, outside for ball. So Michael Conforto will come to bat with a man on. Conforto just tearing it up right now. Top 10 in the National League in both on base and slugging. Had a two run double Wednesday night that helped put away the Mets sixth straight win. And that was after three fruitless at bats. And a lot of people were talking after the game about the fact that Conforto even with all the runners that he left on base those first three at bats never changed demeanor. He has one idea when he comes to the plate and that's take a good at bat and he doesn't let one seep into the other. I loved his comments after the game they asked him about it. he said listen uh, I come up every time I come up with people and I want to drive them in it's not going to happen every time. I, I just like those comments instead of. You know, well, you know, pitcher was pitching me too tough, or I missed my pitch. It, just, it happens. Just keep grinding those at bats out. Hey. Nothing in two to Conforto. And that's what I like about Conforto so far. He's willing to go 0 and 2. A nice backdoor slider knees. Not a good pitch to hit. Willing to spit on it and even go 0 and 2. He's very, very patient. How about not moaning and groaning to the umpire on every pitch. Right at first and one out. 0 2 from PV. And then he bounces it. And stopped by Posey. 1 and 2. The lefties have been giving PV trouble this year. They're hitting 439 against him coming into this start. He had a start in Colorado that. Well, I guess it's the the chorus field nightmare, right? He gave up 10 extra base hits, mm. which ties the most extra base hits any pitchers allowed in a game in the last 60 years. I hope that's that's a month. Mm. It's a nightmare. 
especially early in the season just kills you numbers. One two to Conforto and he taps one back to the mat. It came off his leg a foul ball. Boy it tied him up right there with that slider inside. Good shot there. Little dot just keeps boring in. But he gets a inside. piece of it. Yeah. Stays in the at bat. Came off his toe. You know what happens when you give up 10 extra base hits, though, Gary? You don't have to do your running in between starts because you do it by backing up the bases for two hours. <laughs> Six doubles, three triples, and a home run in just four innings of work. Wow. That's hard to do. There are going to be a lot more triples at Coors Field this year, too. Here's the one-two coming up and in because they put up those higher fences in right center field. So balls that were home runs in the past are now there could be a lot of three bases. Being called the Breidich Barrier. Breidich Barrier. Their general managers, Jeff Breidich. Doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. It doesn't exactly. I'm, that's why I'm giving you the heads up. You Not gotta, exactly like Tal's Hill. I'm giving you the heads up. You got two weeks <laughs> to get on it. <laughs> And Conforto goes down in the cutter, and Peavy has his first strike out of the night, two out of the inning. Pitched him pretty tough right there. Not a strike, tough to lay off. Another slider. It's interesting how every pitch is connected. He threw one to Conforto for a strike earlier in the count, so now he's thinking the same thing, but it was a ball. So here's Ioannis Cespedes making his return to the lineup tonight. This will be more than a cameo for Ioannis. At least he hopes so. He was on the field for about 17 seconds on Tuesday night. He had a three run pinch hit home run on the first pitch he saw. Ducked out of the uh, ballpark after the game was over and now back in the lineup tonight. And he takes a curveball for a strike from PV. Cespedes with extra base hits in each of his last eight games, which ties the Mets club record. Ty Wigginson had extra base hits in eight straight games back in 2004. So Cespedes with a chance to set a new mark tonight. <laughs> it was right before they traded Ty away. Fly ball, shallow center, span coming on. You know why they traded Wigginson, right? They had this kid coming up from the minors, kid named David Wright. Oh, number five. Yeah, they had to make room for him. No score after one. Second inning, Brandon Belt leads off against Stephen Matz. That's put on the full shift against Belt with David Wright shifting over to the right side. Belt just signed a big six year contract, $79 million a couple of weeks ago with the Giants. And his celebratory moment on Wednesday when he drove in five runs in the Giants win over the Padres. There's your defense, and you see the pull there for Belt. Even against the left handed pitching, they play the pull, yeah. which I find interesting. Now Cabrera is going to go back to his shortstop position with one strike. And Bell trying to bunt his way on with the left side completely open. Hey, you're leading off an inning. It's a good idea if you can get it down. Well, and, and we've talked about this. It's one thing if you're the 35 home run guy, but yeah. Brandon Belt's a 15 to 18 home run guy. Why wouldn't he take the free hit? That's right. Smacks one foul. <coughs> A belt a guy who's just coming into his own. 280 last year, 18 home runs. Brandon Crawford, who also signed a long term deal recently with the Giants, waiting on deck. So they're securing their core for the next few years. Check swing, did he go? He did not. Three and two to Belt. So a lot of pitches for Steven Matz early in this game, through 24 in the first inning. Three two and Belt hits one to the vacated space and he'll have an infield hit didn't mean to but busted his bat and rolled one to the vacated left side and that's the third Giants hit. That's what he tried to do that for the second pitch of the at bat. 
Saws him off. Oh. So the Giants have the leadoff man on, and the number seven hitter Brandon Crawford coming up. Crawford so far this year has struggled against the lefties, hitting just 130. At his career year last year, finally became the hitter they thought he would to go along with his gold glove defense. 21 home runs last year, 84 driven in. That got him a brand new six year, $75 million contract. Now the Giants have been hitting the pitcher eighth regularly, and Jake Peavy is on deck. Angel Pagan has uh, done a nice job hitting in the nine hole, and Bruce Bochy has kept that intact. Well, and Matt's finds misses the bottom of the strike zone one and one. It's like if you have on your ball club an eighth place hitter that had led off in his career, that's the guy you want batting ninth and the pitcher hitting eighth. It seems to be the plan. Yeah. Whether it actually helps produce more offense, I think, is a, an open question as Crawford has to bend out of the way two and one. The theme so far for Steven is just that he has been up with his pitches. He's having a hard time getting the ball down. Had much better fastball command his last time out in Atlanta. But struggling early in this one. <coughs> that finds the inside corner. Two and two. A little easier to go right after guys when there's a little less meat and potatoes in the lineup, you know? There goes Belt. Crawford strikes out. Pawecki's throw. Got him. Strike him out. Throw him out. Double play. That's a close one at second base. It was a high tag. It's just wonder if he got underneath the tag. No, I think he got him on the shoulder before his foot got in there. That's very, boom boom. Very, very close. close. Yeah, so it's got to stay. Ron <laughs> Culpa is the second base umpire. Oh, oh, oh I tell you. No, no sign of a challenge from the Giants. So it goes as a strikeout, caught stealing two six, two out and nobody on, and now Peavy will bat. And you know, part of that I think, if it's a close enough call, if you're Bruce Bochy. You got the pitcher coming up next. You don't want to waste your challenge in the yeah. second inning on a 50 50 proposition. Of course. And you have you noticed instead of taking the throw from the catcher three feet in front of the bag Cabrera takes it right on the bag lets the ball travel. Strike three called and that gets matched through the inning. So back to back strikeouts for Steven middle of the second at City Field with no score. Coach Dick Scott after his fine throw to complete the strike him out throw him out. Well there's the two catchers Darno on your right. And look at the difference in release similar pitches. Lucas Duda leads off in the home second. And it takes outside from Jake Peavy. It's interesting watching Klawecki throw because. He doesn't really fire out from behind the plate he's more. Standing tall when he releases the ball. Yeah, he kind of uh, flicks it out there, but it's got carry on it. He gets up and yet still gets rid of it quickly. He kind of gets the angle like pitchers do, gets on top of it. He throws more from on top. Darnell throws a little more from the side. So far, Plowecki has enjoyed success. That's five of eight now that he's thrown out to start his season. Darnell, three of 17. Give Lucas the hit sign here. Three and out to Duda with Walker on deck, and he takes a strike on the inside. Didn't want to swing at that. The red hot Neil Walker has today and tomorrow to set a Mets club record for home runs in April. Well, that's a good pitch. 3 1, little cutter on that outside part. You know who owned that pitch? Roy Halliday when he was pitching for Philadelphia. If he was a behind a left handed hitter, Little cutter on the outside part for a strike anytime he wanted it. He's throwing a little harder than this. Still, yeah. So. Duda has a home run in his career against Peavy. And he takes outside ball four. So Peavy issues his second walk. That equals the total he had given up in his first four starts. 
Brooklyn Cyclones tickets go on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m. The 2016 schedule includes opening day Friday June 17th plus popular bobblehead nights including Michael Conforto Lucas Duda Wilmer Flores postgame fireworks and more for tickets visit brooklyncyclones.com. So here's the incredible Mr. Walker. No doubles no triples nine home runs. And by the way that's a Mets club record. I didn't know this one they kept but it is and he thinks about a bunt. PB diving after it thrown from his knees but too wide. So they gave Walker the left side of the field and he takes advantage with a bunt hit. The well, issue here Keith is that PB's got a gold glove. He is a great fielder and he almost comes up with this play. He had time to with a good throw to get him at first base. Won his gold glove back in 2012. It's a heck, it's a heck of a play because if he doesn't make that play, the ball's Walker's going to walk to first base. So it was a great effort. Couldn't square himself up on that one knee. So a walk and a bunt hit out of the table set. And you know, for Neil Walker, that's a guy who's hitting home runs who understands the kind of player he is. He's a he's a team player. He's a winning player. Cabrera at the plate third baseman Duffy in on the grass as though he's expecting a bunt from Cabrera It'll be hard to imagine. And the off speed pitch for a strike. Planning for the pull on the infield shortstop way up the middle Crawford. Got Kevin Plowecki the number eight hitter on deck. A very shallow outfield particularly in left field. Pagan playing extremely shallow. And as Drubal flies one foul down the left side, that'll go out of play. Nothing and two. You know, it's uh, amazing, guys, is that the older the pitcher is, the more the fingers are painted of the catcher. Sometimes you see, like AJ Przinsky had just his nails done. Buster Posey, it's almost all the way up to his knuckles. Oh, Peavy's always had terrible eyesight. Yeah. He's worn uh, contacts or glasses since he was a kid. They even got the white powder or whatever it is on his. Well, he's got the green nails and the white powder. Whatever it is. Skeletor. Yeah. <laughs> the good call. Nice Halloween <laughs> colors on the uniform, too. Stole that from Princeton. <laughs> oh, 2 coming. And Cabrera leans back. One and two. Peavy really has to work and be fine with his pitches. He's pitching like the old PV. He's aggressive, but he's just he. I think he's aware, Ronnie. He has to be on the corners. Let's face PV in San Francisco last summer. He pitched a gem against them. Gave up just one earned run in seven innings, but lost. And still has those games in him. And Cabrera smokes one to center field. Span ranging back. Has it lined up and grabs it, tagging it second is Duda, and he moves over to third. So Cabrera hit it deep enough to get Duda to third base with one out. Well, Cabrera knows how to hit situational hit. He had that real fine game, I believe it was in Atlanta, where he hit second in the order and set up the two run run scoring situations with a Quinn Granderson let off with a walk and a single. So he knows how to handle the bat. So now it's Plowecki trying to get that run in from third. Kevin just four for 23 to start the year. Where you'd like to see Kevin try to concentrate. Plowecki's not going to throw a lot of pitches inside. Most of them are going to be cutters, sliders away. Concentrate on that middle right side of the diamond because when he tries to pull the ball, that's that double play ball that can be turned. It was Tuesday night. Pulecki hit two balls solidly to right center. One was caught. One got down for a hit right before Cespedes' big home run. Due to third Walker at first with one out. GV paints the outside corner. He's a leg flying all over the place. He really was 
a gun gunslinger in his time, wasn't he? A little more judicious now, more like Judge Roy Bean, maybe, not the gunslinger. The hanging judge. Yeah. 148 wins in his big league career, now 34 years old. And Ploiecki lays off the cutter. Oh, they say swung. Wow. That's twice now, now Paul Nart. So, some, so, you know, just like the strike zone, some umpires have a bigger strike zone. Some base umpires have a or more aggressive in calling the check swing. So that puts Ploiecki in a two strike hole. With Steven Matz on deck. Ploiecki lays off. And it's one and two. One two coming. And again Ploiecki able to lay off the breaking ball two and two. And this is by design from PV Ron. I he's trying to get a, a, a strikeout without throwing a strike ahead and count. Or if Ploiecki tries to pull it it's going to be a ball on the ground. <clears throat> he's going to try to paint him away now. Two two to Ploiecki. And he flies one foul. That'll go out of play. See the crowd bumbled up against the weather. 52 degrees at game time. Wind blowing in. A little light rain falling. I, I don't. I don't get the umbrellas at the ball game. I mean, you are obstructing the person behind you, right? But. Don't you hate those people with big umbrellas in front of you and you're trying to watch a game? How about reclining in the, on the airplane? <laughs> Strike three called. <coughs> PV set him up and got him looking at a fastball for the second out. I was waiting for that fastball in after everything away, Ron. And well, th this is this is good pitching right here. Yeah, well, he had taken the slider, so as a veteran pitcher, you got to say to yourself, I can't take a chance on another slider. I can't go to 3 2. So let's see if you can. Dot him inside, and he did. He made the pitch. So Ploiecki couldn't get the run in, but Peavy's not out of the woods yet. He has to face Stephen Matz, who's five for 16 with five RBIs in his big league career. Makes him a lifetime 313 hitter. First and third, two out. And he goes after a first pitch slider, nothing in one. How many first pitch breaking balls have you seen against this Mets pitching staff when they're up to bat? And it's going to only get more. Duda at third, Walker at first. Well, both these teams have pitchers yeah. you can hit. PB's off to a fast start. Matz lays off a ball and a strike. The inning began with a walk to Duda. Walker with the shift on, laid down a bunt and beat it out. Cabrera flied out, Ploiecki struck out, and now Matz trying to pick up the run with two out. Stephen Matz, a one time high school first baseman. Takes a fastball that misses low and in, two and one. And this is the one thing that I've noticed about the, the Mets pitching staff when they hit as Grandy Waits on deck. They've got a really good eye, too. I mean, they don't go up there just swinging, they, they are looking for a pitch to hit. Matt showed us in his first start, he's got some potential to right center field. He likes that gap. He certainly mm. caught people's attention in that first start against the Reds <laughs> last year. Three for three with four RBIs. Well, he got himself in a little bit of trouble here at three and one now, and Matz has got himself in a fastball situation. Don't want to walk Matz with Granderson in the on deck circle. At certain times in a game as a pitcher, you just got to groove it and just hope he hits it at someone. 
And Matz fouls it off. Threw a little sinker up there though. That had a little bit of sink on it. Twenty two pitches in the inning for Peavy. Matz with the no hitting gloves Keith. For former left handed first baseman. <laughs> Belt moves behind Walker at first. He'll be running on three and two. Duda leads off third. And Matt swings and misses at the cutter. And the side retired. So Peavy with back to back strikeouts gets himself through a second inning jam. Still no score at City Field. Sunday, May 1st. Hey, that's this Sunday. Watch the Mets take on the Giants at 110. The first 15,000 fans in attendance will receive a pair of Curtis Granderson baseball socks, courtesy of East Coast Power and Gas. With a large crowd expected, be sure to arrive early and take the train to the game. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash Family Sundays. Now time for something to smile about, presented by AT&T Cricket Wireless. Getting a ball from a big league baseball player. That's something to smile about. Handshake too. Oh, well, the rain's gotten a little steadier over the last few minutes. Some of the fans have gone back for cover, but not raining hard enough to stop the game. Angel Pagan will lead off in the third against Stephen Matz, and the former Met takes a strike. Pagan who had knee surgery in the offseason, settling into a new position in left field and a new spot in the batting order in the nine hole, and he's done very well with both. It's a good time for his career for that defensive change to happen. 34 years old now. Spent four years as a Met, 08 through 11. Poncho, the poncho works. Oh, the red looked a little nervous. Smacked down to first and Duda handles it. Yeah, Pagan <laughs> retired, one away. Who were the two players the Mets got? Ramon Ramirez. That's right, the right hander. And had a Andres, hard time. Andres Torres. Had a hard time throwing strikes. And then Andres Torres was a little leadoff hitter. Who, who had a little problem saying hello to people multiple times during well, the day. He wore a great pair of jeans, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, Angel had a couple of really good years as a Met. His last year wasn't great, and the Mets did not realize that he was going to. Have as long and productive a career as he's turned out to have. And he's uh, he's done well in San Francisco. There's Denard Span, who spent last year as a Washington National until hip surgery derailed his season. It's interesting that the Giants took a flyer on Span. Yeah. Three years, 31 million for a guy coming off hip surgery. Well, two years ago, you can make the argument that uh, he and Rendon were maybe the MVPs of that Nationals team. Uh, last year lots of injuries you're right it's hard to bet on a guy who's been that hurt and he finds the hole on the right side and span has a base hit B but for all of us that watched him against the Mets when he was a national I mean that's what you usually saw base hits from span well that's four hits against Mats and none has been hit particularly hard Joe panic had the first one a ground ball down to third that David Wright backed up on. So Joe Panic, who has uh, hit safely in each of the last six games he's played against the Mets, in over 400 against Mets pitching last year, one of four players who had over 20 at bats against the Mets and hit over 400. The others were Jason Hayward, Andrelton Simmons, and D. Gordon. Huh. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but it is it was so disappointing to wake up this morning and hear the news about D Gordon being suspended for 80 games. Well I, I just um, you know what has happened is that you're going to have to find out how monetarily to make this not happen anymore for the players because you can let's say OK that D Gordon has taken something for a while. Well, he's gotten a $50 million contract because of that. He'll lose what? A buck three, a million three this year because of the suspension? Makes you wonder batting title last year, is uh -huh. that tainted? Uh, the four game sweep by the Marlins while he's able to still play? Well, that, that Justin Verlander was up in arms about that, about the fact that players are able to play while they appeal these suspensions. 
It's popped up. David Wright might have a play over near the railway. <laughs> Just totally oh. quite enough room. And and you know the two cases that have come down in the last few days, Chris Colabello and D. Gordon. You know you 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 look at them and and we don't know. All we know is that they each failed a drug test. Yeah. But you look at the arc of their careers with Colabello having been a guy who couldn't get out of independent ball and then all of a sudden becomes a big leaguer. D. Gordon, who was basically a backup player with the Dodgers and now has become a batting title holder over the last few years, and it really makes you believe whether it's true or not. As you say that they've probably been using for a while to get them over the hump in their career and get them to this point and it's only now that they're failing tests because maybe the testing's getting a little better. Yes well I think that's the issue we always assume because people tell us that the players are ahead of the testing that might not be the case out to center field Cespedes right there and you know if you hear it enough what did D Gordon hear as a player all the time it's too thin. He can't play an entire season. He needs to be stronger. People always think that uh, you know PEDs are for power. They're performance enhancing drugs, not power enhancing drugs. They give you the ability to play better than you can. Well, they make you infinitely bigger and stronger, get the ball further, but also strong enough to last the season. And they have a, an effect of uh, an amphetamine too, so it's two for the price of one. Well, it's going to be up. It's going to be up to the the players' association and the players within the players' association to to make this better. And and the reason I say that is, I hear some fans <coughs> say, "Well, we don't care if the players use performance enhancing drugs. Let them all use them. We don't care." Yeah. And that's fine for the fans, but for the players, every time you get a player who's Using performance enhancing drug, he's taking money out of the pocket of a player who's not. That's right. And, and he's not cheating. And it's up to the players to make it to the point where it's not worth it to do that. I saw a tweet from our good friend Vic Black. He said, I'm down here trying to rehab, and guys are uh, testing positive. Classy move, guys. That was his tweet. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, I like what Verlander says. I like what others say, but it's going to take more than a couple of players. It's going to take some real monetary monetary action. And what I mean by that, a guy like D. Gordon, who's on a fifty million dollar contract, <clears throat> you test positive, it's voided. And if you come back, you play for the league minimum. And then you got to play for a year. And if you test negative for a year, then you can negotiate a new contract. How about that? Are the players ever going to agree to that? No, no, they'll I, never agree to that. Yeah, but that's but that's about policing their own and protecting themselves. I mean, it, it, the other part about it is that you know the union is very protective of these players who who fail drug tests. They 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 seem to back them more than sometimes they back the the players who aren't cheating, and that's got to change. Well, I understand the well, the gains that the players have made in collective bargaining, but eventually. If guys are cheating and taking money out of your pocket, you have to protect yourself from them. I think it's going to have to be Gary, where it's a you really hurt your team as well as yourself in the wallet, and that is a full year suspension, and you lose a full year salary. That's a start, Keith. That's a start. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is, and uh, yeah, that way you really hurt your team. If, and if you get caught in August, well, guess what? It's going over to the next year. You're going to lose a year's salary. You've already got to make it hurt. Mm. Two two to Duffy. <laughs> Little looper into shallow center. That'll fall for a hit. Span's going to go first to third. And so the Giants have runners at the corners and Buster Posey coming up. Well that's the cutter there and it's kind of a little a little bit lazy although good placement inside but Duffy kind of fought it off. And no hesitation two outs on contact you're running. So the Giants now with five singles against Steven Matz. Buster Posey had one of those he rolled one up the middle for a base hit in the first. First and third and two down. 
And Posey takes inside. Plawecki mishandles Ooh. it. The runner at first base, Duffy, went halfway and then stopped. Wow. Perhaps, I don't know, was he trying to draw a throw to try and steal a run? No, he's got to get in scoring position. Yeah. This is a major error in judgment. He's out there. He had it. Easy. Just a misread by Duffy there. He didn't know what to do. <clears throat> One and out to Posey. Well, I, back. I guess if you're on first base and you're Duffy, your thought is if I get thrown out at second base with Posey up in the bat, uh, Bochy's going to be all over me. Still, you, don't, yeah, you, you yeah, can't yeah. think that yeah, out. Yeah, there. you're right. You've right. you got to get in scoring position to base it and be two RBIs, two runs on the board. Change up popped up. And in comes Granderson to call. Side retire. So Matz gets a king size out there, retiring Posey on a fly ball to strand two. Still no score. They're now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was sick that day. I remember that pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> you could win a $25 gas card. Just follow SNY on Twitter during the fifth inning of tonight's game for details on how to enter the, the SNY fifth inning sweepstakes presented by Tri State Ford. Second time around the batting order for the Mets as they come up in the bottom of the third against Jake Peavy. Curtis Granderson grounded out to first base his first time. That's got the first two men on against PV in the second, but couldn't bring a run around. Oh, reload. Talked about the Giants and the fact that their pitching has been up and down. The Giants starters have thrown more innings than any staff in the National League so far this year. Part of that is that Bruce Bochy does not have a lot of confidence in his bullpen, especially with both Sergio Romo and George Contos on the disabled list. He's got a lot of young kids out there. He's got a veteran starting staff and he's been pushing them. Three and one to Granderson. We're not going to see the two. New acquisitions for the Giants in this series Johnny Cueto and Jeff Samarja. Matt Kane, who's been struggling, goes tomorrow, and their ace, Madison Bumgarner, Sunday. Good eye. And that's inside ball four. Granderson waiting for the call from Gabe Morales, and the call was ball four, second straight leadoff walk for PV. Three in the game now for PV, who usually has impeccable control. He had walked just two batters in 21 innings over his first four starts. You know, for our younger fans out there, when Jake Peavy was with the Padres and won, won his Cy Young, he was a little Jake Arrieta like, and that's how hard he was to hit. Great slider, great movement. Bulldog. David Wright drew a walk his first time up. He's got a good move. Won't need it much with the Mets. Mets have stolen only five bases over their first 20 games. Granderson has none. What the Mets have been doing is hitting scads of home runs, 28 of them in their last 12 games. In fact, the 30 home runs the Mets have hit in their first 20 games is a franchise record. 1978, uh, 1987, and 1988, the Mets hit 28 in their first 20 games. This year, 30. Beebe's getting himself in some trouble here. High fastball, and he tried to sink it, both out of the strike zone. Well, Conforto waiting on deck. And that misses ball three. When you've lost something in your repertoire as a older pitcher from four to one deck, you try to be so precise. You try to throw breaking balls behind in the count. If you don't have your control, 
that puts you in harm's way all night long. Well, he's been nibbling the whole game and yep. getting himself in trouble, and sooner or later, you know, it's hard to keep that up for 100 pitches. Dave Rigetti, the longtime Giants pitching coach, keeping tabs on Peavy. 16 years as the pitching coach. And Wright takes it high, ball four. So back to back walks to start the bottom of the third. And four walks in two innings plus for Jake Peavy. Peavy was up to that. Peavy was asking Morales there, where is that pitch? So he and Morales having a little go back and forth. Now he has to contend with the youngster, the up and coming Michael Conforto. Is that up? Is that high? Okay. And as soon as you turn around, you go, that ain't up. <coughs> that ball's right there. Punch a hole in that mask. Got Conforto on a slider to strike him out in the back in the first. Granderson at second, right at first, and nobody out. And Conforto attacks the first pitch and fouls it off. That's both at bats, he's attacked first pitch now against Peavy. 30 games over 500 for PB with a three and a half ERA. Something less than a full shift against Conforto with two men on. And he lines one in the left center for a base hit. Granderson will score. Span cuts it off. Right goes to third. Conforto's going to try for second, and he makes it safely. An RBI double for Michael Conforto, and the Mets take the early lead. Just keep using that left center field. He can hit. This is a bullet, little backdoor slider, gets it out over the plate, hits it right where it's pitched. <clears throat> a little bit of confusion on. Conforto's part here. Granderson's going to score easily. Well, it was a bad play by Span because Span needed to throw the ball to second base. He did not. That's where the confusion came. Conforto hesitated between. Right, he hesitates. Second. I'm wondering, but it was. He wasn't looking at David. That's he's got to go. That's a double. <clears throat> so the Mets cash in one of those PV walks. Now it's Cespedes. Five straight games with a double for Conforto. Infield back. Second and third, nobody out. And Cespedes takes the breaking ball in the dirt. Peavy's in trouble if he's going to throw the, the breaking ball to Cespedes. He just is such a good breaking ball hitter. And I'm, I'm telling you, as good a breaking ball hitter as Albert Bell, I remember facing with Cleveland. Not only does he hit it, but he hits it for pop. Cespedes fly to center his first time up. Chases the cutter off the plate, one on one. He got Cespedes before to pop up to center field on the fastball in. Let's see if he tries to do that again in this at bat. Despite missing most of the last week, Cespedes still seventh in the league in home runs, sixth in RBIs, third in slugging percentage. Been on a terrific hot streak. TV with a perfect pitch outside corner at the knees, one and two. Wanted it in, Gary, and it wound up on the outside corner and it missed on the other side of the corner. Perfect. Results. You got it. I wonder where Brandon Belt is playing. Can he get back to first base with the ground ball? He can. Uh, you let your infielders know where you are, Gare. <clears throat> you have a runner at third base on a ground ball, particularly the third baseman is going to hold that runner. No cutters away. Cespedes, if he wants to <clears throat> go away, that's just an easy base hit. Right at third, Conforto at second, nobody out. Two and two to Cespedes with Duda to follow. Step off here. Cespedes playing with that bruise on his leg. He says, and Terry Collins says, he may need to limit his sliding, but everything else should be okay. And he lines one to center for a base hit, and that'll bring home two. 
Right is in. Conforto right behind him. Suspinus drives with a pair, and it's 3 0 New York. Stay away, hit it away, huh, Keith? It's just a flat little slider, almost like a cutter, and they've kind of, second time through the order, they've kind of got him. Now watch Conforto here. Can't kick it into third gear. Let's go. Got to run. Run hard, then after you make that turn, there's the base hit. Make that turn and you look over your shoulder to see where the ball is in regard to the center fielder. Then you can back it down to third. It was one of the focuses for Cespedes this spring was driving the ball to right center on that pitch away. And it really came into play there. And the Mets with three runs home nobody out. Lucas Duda at the plate and he takes inside ball one. For Cespedes 16 RBIs in his last nine games. Duda walked his first time up on a four walks PB's given up two of them have scored in this inning. And he finds the inside corner a ball to strike. After that base hit by Cespedes Dave Rigetti paid a visit to the mound no action as yet in the Giants bullpen but it has not come easily for PV right from the beginning. If it hurts Cespedes to slide, what does he do on a ground ball going into second base? Does he just peel off? You can slide. Can you slide on the other on the other leg? He I said, know it's a little bit. Uh, he said he usually slides on the right. You can peel off. Mm. Not try to break up too, is what you're saying. But you have to. But get it's out late of the in the game. It's a tight game. Yeah. You, you know. Well, that's that's Terry Collins' biggest, <laughs> biggest fear is that, you know, he aggravated it sliding in Atlanta. He doesn't want it to do it again, and lose him for another week or two. Lucas could hit it out of the park and make it easier. It would certainly help. Neil Walker waits on deck. Two-two from PV, and Duda lays off. Full count. <sighs> I have this theory that certain pitchers, as they age, if they have a certain personality. And Jake Peavy to me is one of those guys who has a frenetic gamer personality. It's really hard as you go further into your career to back it all the way down and become a touch and feel kind of pitcher. Become a breaking ball pitcher. Yeah, his his way of pitching is to be aggressive, and yep. it's just the opposite tonight. Mike Broadway up in the Giants bullpen as Peavy continues to struggle. Cespedes at first, nobody out with a 3 2 count to Duda. Run them. Not going. And Duda fouls it away. Three two cutter. Peavy's throwing 23 pitches in this inning and still looking for an out. And working very slow. Mets have just put put the pressure on him this inning. Duda pulls one foul. <clears throat> well, he had three rough outings in a row to start the season. Turned into a good one against Miami last time out, but this one not going well for Jake Peavy. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming to Duda. And Lucas fouls off the cutter. Still three and two. Well, how about those Philadelphia Phillies, Gary? They swept the Washington Nationals. That's some great pitching in that series. Two games over 500. We got five shutouts tonight. Ellison pitched a great game. Nola pitched a great game. And 
Duda just got a piece of the curveball to stay in there. And Adam Morgan going tonight. He's taking the place of Charlie Morton, who went on the DL, is going to miss the rest of the year. Adam Morgan, who was very disappointed not making the staff out of spring training, he gives them a left hander in their rotation. This will be the tenth pitch of the at bat from Peavy to Duda. And Lucas takes the inside ball four. Wow. So there's a terrific turn at bat for Duda. Third walk of the inning and the fifth of the game for Peavy. And how much further can they go with him? You know, it's got to be interesting for manager Bruce Bochy is that while he was having his great years in San Diego, Bochy was his manager. And now he's his manager here at the in the fall of his career. He did well last year for the Giants, yeah. made 19 starts, 8 and 6, 3.58. Certainly nothing to be ashamed of. This year's gotten off to a very different start. He finished up 11 and 4 in his last 14 starts. Neil Walker with a chance to put the hammer down, still nobody out, and he takes a strike on the outside. Walker laid down a bunt single his first time up. Well, he's staying with the breaking ball, Ronnie, and he just can't get it over with any consistency, and that's why he's got three walks in the inning and two rockets are hit off of him. And four to a two run uh, run scoring double. Sessman is a two run single. Still nobody out. And Walker takes the breaking ball for a strike, and it's 0 2. Not a great breaking ball, kind of a roller, but it gets the call from Morales. You know it's interesting the, the the less you have on the ball the more you have to use your fastball does that make any sense you know like you have to use it enough or then it just becomes all breaking balls and the hitters make the adjustment. Well, wow. we saw him pitch backwards effectively to Plawecki in a key at bat in the last inning, right? Set him up with breaking stuff and then got him looking at a fastball. And that's what he could do here, especially inside. The pitcher comes back over the inside part of the plate, but I guess maybe he doesn't feel like he has to feel for it tonight. It's hard to do inning after inning. He's thrown a lot of pitches. Walter down the right field line toward the corner, and it's one hop to the wall. Cespedes is in. Due to the third, Neil Walker with an RBI double, and it's 4 0 New York. First double of the year for Neil Walker. Breaking ball down and in. He wanted it back door, look at it come right over the middle. It just a little bit of off speed got him out in front, otherwise, this one would have been his 10th home run. And that's going to be all for Jake Peavy. Six straight Mets have reached base. Four have scored here in the third. And Bruce Bochy is going to make a pitching change. So Peavy is out after two innings plus. Called to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. Mike Broadway off Broadway. <laughs> He's gone after two innings plus. It's a cruel game. Yes it is. I was just telling you guys at the break uh, I had a lot of starts like that in 1995 I'm hip to his pain but Mike Broadway here has got to come in and and pick him up appeared in 21 games for the Giants last season didn't make it to the big leagues till he was 28 former fourth round pick of the Braves. As Drupal Cabrera first man to face him four runs home in the inning still nobody out with runners second and third and the Giants will bring their infield in. Cabrera flied to center his first time up. Duda at third, Walker at second. So Neil Walker's first nine extra base hits as a Met were home runs. Nobody had ever done that before as a Met. Ron Swoboda, his first eight extra base hits were home runs in 1968. Rock. Wow. And now Walker's streak ends at nine with his first double. But Swoboda didn't do it in April, correct? Uh, well, he had to start the season until April, yeah. Driven toward the gap in left center field, and that will go to the wall. Two more will score. Do that, Walker in. An opposite field double for as Dribble Cabrera makes it six nothing New York.
Well. Broadway, Pam. Yeah. And uh, Cabrera says, give my regards. <clears throat> no longer standing room only. And the Mets are just pounding the baseball. In the midst of a six game winning streak. Oh, Peavy's numbers are not pretty. All the runs charged to Peavy. Book not closed on him. Now Kevin Pulecki, eighth man up in the inning, still nobody out. <laughs> and he takes a fastball from Broadway for a strike. Peavy's ERA through five starts is now 8.61. <laughs> Giants have another former All Star pitching for them tomorrow. Matt Cain will take them out, and he, like PV, has gotten off to a difficult start. He's in a transitional stage himself. You know, <coughs> we used to always call him the hard luck guy for the Giants. He always would throw eight innings, one run, and have a no decision or a loss at sometimes. Lecky struck out his first time, and he lays off the slider, two and one. The six runs in the inning, the most the Mets have scored in an inning this year. And they have stole nobody out. Well, Broadway is a big kid on that mound. Interesting when he gets in the stretch, he almost holds that ball out of his glove. Watch when he holds it and he puts it around his chest. It's almost the ball's almost out of the glove. Now, I just read this. I, I don't know how prevalent this is, but you know what Broadway's nickname is? He said how big he was. Yeah. Bone crusher. <laughs> yeah. Oh. He does look like a bone crusher. And they also have Hunter Strickland out there, right. so do not get in a brawl with this team. I don't know. I think Syndergaard could take them all. Oh, that's right. I, mean, I forgot about <laughs> Thor. Two two coming. Way outside. Posey did well to keep that from going to the backstop. Wow. Posey wish he had his night off tonight. Paducah. I've been there. Yeah. Mets once had a pitcher named Lance Broadway. I think they got him oh, when right. they traded Robbie Alomar to the White Sox. 3 2 to Ploiecki. Outside, ball four. Jeez. Eight straight Mets have reached base to start the inning. That's the fourth walk in the inning. Big nibbling staff, isn't it, Ron? Right tonight. Okay, now Stephen Matz is coming up. Are you going to ask him to bunt with six runs already home in the inning, or are you going to let him swing? Uh, he's going to let him swing. I mean, there's never oh. enough. Um, I, I, the reason I'm saying I would, if I were managing, ha uh, have him bunt because uh, you want to get enough runs. But I'm going with Terry Collins has done in the past. A lot of times he lets these guys swing. Well, the it's Giants are looking for the bunt. It's okay to bunt here. Yes, it's it not is a, okay. It's, not, it's too early in the game, and it's not a big enough lead. I was wrong. He is bunting. <clears throat> At least on the first pitch, he takes a strike. This all began with a walk to Granderson, a walk to right. Conforto doubled in a run. Cespedes is singled in two. Duda walked. Walker doubled in a run. Then the Giants made the pitching change. Cabrera doubled in two, and Ploiecki walked. Six runs home, ninth man up in the inning. Granderson, who started the whole thing, is on deck. And Matz takes a strike, and it's 0 and 2. Maybe now we'll get to swing the bat. He's non bunted himself into a swing. <laughs> Struck out his first time up tonight. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Keith, it, cre it creeps up on me. I think we're going to send you home. Yes. Oh. Need to get you some chicken soup. And Matt's bunt strike three, so that's the first out of the inning. Okay, they batted around. How many times now have the Mets batted around, Garrett? They've done it more than once. I know one of one other time. 
because I can remember from the scorebook, you know, whenever you that do five it. Five run inning in Cleveland, they yeah. must have batted around in that one. Okay. So here's Granderson who walked to start the inning. Cabrera at second, Ploiecki at first, with one out. And Broadway fires a strike. They batted around. Remember Cozart when he started from Miami here at City Field. They batted around in that game also. He's in the minor leagues now yeah. here at Cozart. Well, Sandy Alderson knew and he stated pretty much that he had to improve the offense. And he's made some really nice moves in the offseason to bolster this lineup. And I do think it was critical to get Cespedes back, and that was something that maybe we we all thought wasn't going to happen, but it did happen. But the, the acquisitions of the of the of Cabrera and and Walker have been uh, just it's a lineup now with this pitching staff. You score three runs, you're going to win most of your games. Well, the two middle infielders I think have performed beyond anybody's expectations for the first month. One and two to Granderson. Boy, he throws 95 miles an hour, and most of the uh, pitches he's thrown are sliders yes. so far. Uh, amazing. Right? Yep. Danny Barr, director, got a good shot there. I've never seen a pitcher hold the ball so that he gives the grip away to the runner on second base. It's a very strange thing to do. You're always trying to hide the ball from the runner on second. He does that double set. I don't think I've seen that yeah. before. He comes to his belt and then he comes up high. So you got to make sure you don't balk, huh? Right? Run. You got to do the same thing every time. It just <clears throat> that's the way he does it. Big strong kid. Remember they um, they made Doc Gooden change his stretch position and hold his hands oh. high to try and stop the running game. How about the year they tried to teach him the sinker? I mean, <laughs> where did that come from? Well, I remember after Doc in '85 had the great year. Granderson hits one in the air to right. Jason Pence back to the warning track, back near the wall, and he's off the ball. Cabrera to third. He's being waved home. Panic will not make a relay throw, and it's seven to nothing. Well, Pence tracked it all the way right to the fence and just could not secure it. Well, he didn't track it because he was over, he miscalculated where it was going to be. He thinks it's there. Uh oh, I better get luck. No, not that bad. Hit right off the thumb <coughs> of the glove. I got to believe that's an E9. What are they going to do? The way it's going tonight, I bet you it's a base hit. Because the runners had to hold, Cabrera scampered home, but Ploiecki only got as far as second, and Granderson's on first. Keith, you notice that? Not yes. the back and forth. Thank just you. stood still. Took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> Everybody tagging up. Don't go darting back and forth. Just get out there and hang. <laughs> so seven runs are in, still one out. David Wright, the 11th man up in the inning. He walked earlier in this third. In fact, he's walked twice tonight, and they are giving Granderson credit for a hit. So a single and an RBI for Granderson on the ball off Pence's glove. And gets an RBI out of that. Boy, this is just a, so uncharacteristic of the Giants. But they've had some games like this this yeah. season. They've given up their staff the second most hits of any staff in the National League. And I'm used to that with San Francisco. David takes a slider for a strike. Their starters um, have pitched the most innings in the National League, but they've given up the most hits to the staff. That usually doesn't go hand in hand. First six runs of the inning charged to Jake Peavy, the last one to Mike Broadway. One and two now to right with Conforto on deck. So the Mets with their biggest inning of the season and looking for more. Oh, 
off the corner, two and two. And I like in this inning though, the two, not the biggest hits, but two big hits. Conforto the left center, Cespedes the right center. Love seeing that in RBI situations. Makes it very difficult for the pitcher. Also like Cabrera's opposite field double yeah. into the gap. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> Using the whole field today, the Mets, both gaps. Which is interesting, right? For a, a team that's been hitting a lot of home runs. Right. They're not getting home run happy. Well, they're not going to be able to keep that pace up. Uh, they will hit their fair share of home runs, but the pace that they were at was just uh, ungodly. Well, Stephen Matz has done a lot of sitting around this inning, but he'll take it. <laughs> yeah. He's the only out of the inning. Two two to right and David Rockets one to the left for a base hit. Lewecki held up he'll go to third and stop there. So David Wright on base for the third time tonight ball gets loose on the infield but no advance. And now the Mets are have the bases loaded for Conforto. Oh Conforto can have himself a big inning here. Nothing slider. It's a little bender. Kind of caught it off the end but still dumped it in front of Pagan. And Dave Rigetti with another trip. One by the manager and two by Rigetti. You know, this inning may never end. You know why? Why? Right. Because we were talking about sending Keith home after the inning. Exactly. And, and <laughs> you know, the, the baseball guys just don't want him to leave. That's a hang with him right there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And now let's see what Conforto can do here with the bases loaded and have himself. The biggest inning of his career, young career. Well, he drove in the first run of this seven run inning with a double to left center. That was against Jake Peavy, and now he gets a crack at Mike Broadway. And Ford of the 12th man up in this inning, still only one out. Pilecki now at third, Granderson at second, and Wright at first. Conforto lays off the changeup. Mm. One and zero. Fish weren't biting. One and zero. Bases loaded in the driver's seat. Two and zero. This may never end. Broadway is more like the West 4th Street Playhouse tonight. <laughs> Fordo is all set up for a smash. <laughs> all right, what am I going to do here? I got to throw up a little sinker and just hope I can get a ground ball. Can't go three and oh. No need to even give a sign here. Oh, three and oh. He did go with the slider. Oh, uh, what are you going to do now? Wow. Punt. It's got to be the loneliest feeling, right? Gosh, do you give, the, you give Gun Conforto a hit sign here? I think I would. He, pro he, he probably did throughout his non professional years. That's a good one grand slam this year. That was Granderson. And Conforto takes a strike three and one. There's no change on his face. You wouldn't know he had a, a base hit in this inning or it struck out. Just in the moment. Ready to go to hitting now on three and one with Cespedes on deck. And Conforto takes a strike with a fastball three and two. It's a good pitch. He did put it in a good spot. But young Conforto can hit that pitch. But he's just his patience is 
beyond his experience in the major leagues. Base is loaded, one out, three and two to Conforto. And Michael cracks one in the right field for a base hit. That'll bring in Ploiecki. Everybody else moves up a base. Conforto moves the line with his second RBI of the inning. And it's an eight run third inning for New York. Another bullet <coughs> off the bat of Conforto. Tried to come inside. <laughs> Threw it right down the great white way. <laughs> Wow. Well, there's all kinds of saber metrics. One of them is that Conforto has the hardest hit rate of any yes, of the big I leagues. Saw, I saw that. Thirty over thirty percent and growing. You can believe that watching him every day. Yeah, right. Cespedes had a two-run single earlier in the inning. He's the thirteenth man up. That's biggest inning ever was 11 runs. That was in Chicago back in 2006. They're threatening for that now. Atkins, Cespedes, cracks it toward the corner. It's out of here! Yoannis Cespedes with a grand slam, and the Mets haven't even dozen. The biggest inning in the 55 year history of the New York Mets and Cespedes puts out the crowning blow. Wow. I'm glad you were here for history, Keith. That was very much like his pinch hit home run, Gary, the other night. Same pitch, same spot, fastball out over the plate, down. <coughs> Oh, helicopter. That's what you get. Talked about his ability to hit the bad breaking ball for power. Well, this can maybe turn into a game now where Terry can get his irregulars in and get them some at bats. Due to grounds went into the shift. And panic throws him out. That's the second out. <coughs> well. Now when the Mets had their 11 run inning in Chicago Cliff Floyd and Carlos Beltran hit grand slams and now it's Cespedes who provides four runs with one swing his third career grand slam to give the Mets the largest inning they've ever had best way not to slide Gary. <laughs> huh. And now Neil Walker the 15th man up in the inning. Well, the grand slam by Cespedes means $2,000 for no kid hungry enough to provide 20,000 healthy meals courtesy of City. Good change up by Broadway. Yeah, the horses are already out of the barn though. First six runs against Jake Peavy, the last six runs against Mike Broadway. Performance that could close in one night. Well, you want to get back in the uniform. This should end the inning. And after the Mets score 12 times, Keith can finally exit the building. <laughs> Keith, go find some chicken soup and mull over a 12 run inning. I'll turn on Howie. On the way home. Thank you. We'll see you soon.
Hunter Pence leads off the fourth inning against Stephen Matz, who must feel as though it's been a week and a half since he's been on the mound. <laughs> 66 pitches thrown by the Giants and a 12 run Mets bottom of the third, shattering the club record for runs in an inning. That's, uh, I, I, you know, I always love to see history. It's, uh, it's fantastic to be in the booth and watch that kind of stuff happen. Well, Keith is now uh, making the drive home. He's going to find a little uh, medicinal relief for what is ailing him. But I'm telling you, there was some karma there. We said we were going to send Keith home after the try inning, and the inning just wouldn't end. I think he should try to uh, redo Soul Train, be Don Cornelius with that voice he's got working now. Shifted perfectly for Pence. Walker throws him out, one away. 45 minutes between pitches for Steven Matz. Let's check in with Steve Gelb. Steve? Gary, one of the fun things we thought we could do this year is check in with different players on the team and, and talk about that moment when they realized that Major League Baseball was actually a real possibility. And with the game going the way it is right now, we've got some time to discuss uh, the guy on the mound a little bit, Steven Matz, who actually has a pretty interesting story when it comes to that. Go back to his goes back to his junior year in high school when he was actually a first baseman, only pitched 15 innings his junior year of high school, but he was trying to get either a D3 or a D2 look. So he went to a showcase, and for the first time, he was clocked as a pitcher, and he came in at 87 to 89 miles per hour consistently blew him away and it blew a lot of people at the showcase away. They said you need to go to a national showcase. He did that and he was thrown in the low 90s 91 consistently said overnight there were scouts in his house seemingly every night. So to go from a guy expecting that you could potentially get a D3 look to now all of a sudden being one of the top pitching prospects took a little while for it to sink in for Steven Matz. Well, you know all about that, don't I do. you? I do. I do. It's a, uh, you know, when you are a player in schoolboy ball, you want, that's what you want to do is you want to be that. But in today's game, if you can throw hard and you're left handed, big time. And Brandon Belt draws a walk. First walk given up by Mats. So you just sat in the dugout for 45 minutes. He took one turn at bat in that span, and now you go to the lead, the mound with a 12-run lead. How do you keep it? Uh, keep your your rhythm going. Well, it, there's no excuse in today's game because the underneath uh, the stadium, Gary, on the way to the clubhouse, they have a mound, a batting cage, a place that's warm that you can go and play a little catch if you wanted to. But if you didn't do that, what you want to do, and maybe he'll learn it over time, or maybe he does already. Is when you come out, you make a real spirited eight or ten pitches warming up, like you're in game condition. You know, you don't go out there and just lollipop it up there. You go and say, okay, the first batter is going to be Hunter Pence. Okay, fastball away, fastball in, breaking ball, changeup. You really try to replicate what's going to happen in the game. That's the best way to get through a long wait. Tonight with the early rounds over the Jets move on to the next part of their draft plan. What does Mike McCagnan have in store get all the questions answered as the Jets add the next pieces on Jets Nation draft day special. Coverage begins tonight at midnight. Only on SNY. Of course that's. If the Mets don't have a couple more 12 run innings. <laughs> Otherwise it might be a, a tad later. Just uh, just some really good at bats you know some. Getting behind in the count by both uh, both Jake Peavy and Broadway, and uh, they took advantage of it. Pulled down to first, and Duda can't corral it, and the Giants have two men on. <laughs> well, Lucas tried to smother that one, and it just hit off the end of his glove. And once it got through, there was no way to. For Lucas to get up and make a play. By the way, in that 12 run inning, Uena Cespedes drove in six of them. The first time a Met has ever done that. Butch Husky had five RBIs in an inning. Really? The, the game that Delgado drove in nine, he didn't drive in six in one inning. Not huh? in one inning. Mike Broadway will bat for himself, lays down the bunt. Small solace. 
two to four on the sacrifice moving the runners to second and third. So Broadway is going to be asked to uh, soak up some innings here. Yes he is. Good bunt. You know the best I ever saw um, Gary and I know Cespedes is, is a best at it. But Vaughn Hayes led off a game against the Mets with a solo home run and then hit a grand slam later in that first inning and that was some kind of start. Now Angel Pagan hitting ninth in the order. Pagan grounded out his first time up. Well Mats was able to scatter five hits over the first three innings. And get some key outs while the game was scoreless. Now 12 runs to the good. Line right at Walker side retire. A bullet off the bat of Pagan. And Matt strands two more. 12 0 Mets in the fourth. Super slow motion is brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. Michael Broadway will have an extended run as we go to the bottom of the fourth. You know, uh, we just saw that super slow mo, and I mentioned it before in passing to our younger viewers. You might not remember, but Albert Bell was just an outstanding hitter for the Orioles and the Indians, and Trevor Brown now catching. Good move by Boach to get Posey out of the game. But he was a great breaking ball hitter. Cespedes is right in his league. As Drupal Cabrera bounces one down to Brandon Belt. One away. Cabrera was the first man Broadway faced when he came in. He was greeted on his second pitch with a double to the gap in left center. And at that point, the route was on. That made it 6 0, and the Mets would eventually score 12 runs in that third inning. Now Kevin Pluecki, who walked and scored in the third, 0 for 1 on the night. So Bruce Bochy gets Posey out of the game because you want to never chance an injury to your superstar catcher in a lopsided game that you know you're going to lose anyway. That's right. Stephen Okert who gets up in the Giants bullpen, the lefty. Hey Gary, with the 4-10 game tomorrow, this is how I feel. I think that the score remains about the same, a 12-0, 12-2, something like that. I still want my starters to play two thirds of the game, six innings, and then they're out. And I would get, uh, you know, Wilmer Flores and Campbell and others. Oweki grounds one for Crawford, two out. So, so what's the balance when when you're playing in a game like this between? The hitter's mantra of I don't want to give away any at bats against swing, get the game over with. Well, uh, I think what is well, what you think, if you're on the Mets side, okay, Gary, you got 12 on the board, you know that Broadway's got to throw strikes here. So you want to be aggressive and swing, and if you get a pitch to hit, you, you fire. Um, I, I don't think you're up there grinding every at bat like you were in the beginning of the game, certainly. Matz flies one out to right. Pence squeezes it. Quick inning for Broadway. After four, 12 0 Mets. I invite you to test drive a new Ford. You'll discover why Ford is the total package. It's been an historic night at City Field. Mets with a 12 run third inning, the biggest inning they have ever had. And now Stephen Matz, three outs away from qualifying for a win, but I would think he'd want more than that tonight. No, I think when you're looking at how the game's going, you know that the Giants are also going to be aggressive because they figure Matz is going to be throwing a lot of strikes. You want to try to get this game into the seventh, maybe through seven. One thing at a time. Though. Third time around the batting order, Denard Span takes a fastball for a strike. Span had a base hit in the third inning. The Giants have had six hits against Matz over the first. Four innings, but they've stranded six. Had a runner thrown out on a strike him out, throw him out double play as well. And nothing but fastballs from Mats to get ahead 0 and 2. While we watch Mats here, we'll also watch with interest what's going on in Minnesota tonight. Because pitching for the Detroit Tigers against the Twins tonight is Michael Fulmer. 
who was the pitcher the primary element in the trade the Mets made with the Tigers last summer was and will just be on the reach of right when the Mets acquired you in a Cespedes so on a night when Cespedes has set a Mets club record with six RBIs in an inning the guy he was traded for Michael Fulmer who figures to be a big time pitching prospect for the Tigers is making his debut and so far so good for Mr. Fulmer. You know the instances are legendary of late season deals like that yes. where a player goes to another team for a rental piece becomes a star. Um, John Smoltz. Doyle Alexander. Jeff Bagwell. That's right. For Larry so Anderson. Larry Anderson. But in this case because Cespedes did what he did last year even if he hadn't resigned even if he had only done what he did last August and September and helped the Mets get to a World Series. Then whatever Michael Fulmer would have done would have made the trade worth it. Even if it becomes John Smoltz? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And the fact that the Mets were able to get Cespedes back, even more so. Well, I liked Fulmer's comments today. Uh, he was asked, he said, listen, I've been waiting for this. My family's been waiting it for it forever. And I just hope I'm good enough to stay for a long time. I mean, very humble thoughts. Lead off walk to span, second one given up by Mats. After he was ahead of Mo too. And and of course the other piece of the deal is you know if Michael Fulmer stays in the Mets organization when does he get his chance. Yeah. Well so it's it's you know it was obviously best for the Mets to get Cespedes but it was also best for Fulmer to get out of the Mets organization. Yeah, exactly. Well we wish him well and so far so good. Here's Joe Panic. Panic has an infield hit and he's flying to center one for two. Due to playing behind Span with a 12 run lead. So and Matt's having trouble throwing strikes and Pluecki will go out for a toss. Well you've noticed he, he's become very fidgety on the mound. Uh, almost like he's you know just hoping this inning gets over quickly so he's a pitcher of record. You, you, you know it's just an inexperience it's you know it's no blame. You just got to realize that this is still a game. Throw your pitches, work on the curveball. You know, it's not all just fastballs and uh, and no pitching involved. Same as it was when you started the game. You know, it's easy to forget because we saw Stephen pitch in the high pressure situations yeah. in the postseason. This is only his 10th major league start. I know, he has like 70 something professional starts. So. Line. David Wright makes the snag. Span gets doubled off first base. Two down. Well, enough blame to go around here. First, though, nice hitting by Panic. But David playing right there, and you just can't get doubled off of your span when you're down a dozen. You know, I wonder, Gary, and this is just a you know a, a thought. With all the shifting, do some of the older players have no idea where the ball is going? They're used to a ball off the bat, that being a hit? I don't know. Well, you know how we talk about base runners needing to check where the outfielders are playing? Now you gotta check for sure where the infielders are playing. It's just a different, yeah. you know, it's a different thing. Matt Duffy grounds one toward the hole. Cabrera running around the backhand and the throw right on target. He got a beautiful play as Dribble Cabrera. He's got a lot of different ways to handle that backhand. This time he ran around it and made a perfect throw to Duda. And that gets Matt through the top of the fifth. Curtis Granderson takes ball one as we start at the bottom of the fifth inning. Curtis had a walk and an RBI single and scored two runs all in the third inning. When the Mets scored all 12 of their runs, he sent 15 men to the plate.
boy watching this Struble Cabrera play shortstop is a fun thing to do. He has a great sense of self great sense of time great sense of how to get the ball over there and just beat the runner by a step. Anderson lifts one foul and that'll make it into the seats. We've seen Cabrera make backhand plays several different ways. We've seen him use the Ray Ordonia slide. We've seen him plant. But I think that's his favorite way of making that play. Yeah. Um, he just has a feel for the game. Uh, it's intuitive. And in today's game, you know, there's a lot of more robotic players, you know, that they can get it done, but they don't have a real feel or intuition for the game. Cabrera certainly does. Anderson pulls one into the shift panic down to a knee almost panics but <laughs> stays calm and throws out Granderson. There's your fourth fifth inning recap you and assessment is did all of that damage in that third inning. A two run single and a grand slam first met ever to drive in six run ins in an inning in the first inning in which the Mets ever scored 12 runs. Nothing against Ford but that's got to be the worst recap we've ever had in the history of the game. I mean that recaps nothing. Of what happened in this game so far. I mean, think we needed a bigger screen. Yes, we did. David Wright's been on base three times already tonight. Two walks and a single. He scored twice. Well, Mike Broadway was brought in when Jake Peavy imploded in the third. He had a, a rougher time of it than Peavy did. Wound up being charged with six runs in that 12 run third. But he has stayed on and now he's retired six in a row since the Cespedes Grand Slam which I understand counts as closing the barn door after the horse is gone. But at least he's given the Giants the innings to protect the rest of the bullpen. Right lifts one deep to right Pence going back has room. Two out. Tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by clean crisp Coors Light. Most batters in one inning this season. This third inning for the Mets tonight. With not the most batters the Mets have ever sent to the plate. And that 11 run inning in Chicago in 06, they had 16 batters come to the plate. Is that the game that you were talking about yeah. with the 11 runs? With the uh, the grand slams by Beltron and Floyd. I don't think we did that game. I think that was a. An ESPN Sunday. Yeah, night. I know. I did not do that game. Was that the same game Glavin won his 300th? Oh, it might or have was been a different game. Oh, it had to be. Because we missed that one too, also in Chicago. Well, you know, we got the Santana no hitter. Yes, we did. Still the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think that could change. Conforto a single, a double, and two RBIs in the big third inning. He drove in the first and the eighth run of that inning. Good news is that the rain seems to have completely cleared out. In case you were thinking, you know, maybe we wouldn't get five innings in. Shallow left center sinking fast, but Pagan gets there to make the play, and that retires the side. So Broadway has settled in to retire eight in a row after five 12 nothing Mets. Trevor Brown up for the first time as we start the sixth inning. Brown came on to catch after the game got out of hand, giving Buster Posey the last five innings off. Brown, 24 years old, out of UCLA. Well, came to catching late, and uh, he's gotten off to a nice quick start for these Giants and had a couple of big hits, including a big home run. Three home runs through his first 28 at bat, so he's done some damage. Matt's ahead of him one and two and he gets him looking at a fastball. Just the third strike out of the night for Matt's. Who fanned nine and eight in his last two starts respectively. So one out and nobody on now Hunter Pence who's been up twice and grounded out both times. The change up there to start him off. So a breaking ball to Trevor Brown to start him off, and now a change up to Pence. So, including all of his pitches here. Good move by Steven. A 
by fastball threw it by him. You know Gary you know why you want to include all your pitches also is that you're probably not getting 12 points your next game. So you're going to have to use all your pitches. So you want to do that in this game here to replicate what you're going to have to do five days from now. That's his next start. It'll be the final game of the homestand against the Braves on Wednesday before the Mets head to the West Coast. Just off the corner of the pass, two and two. So we uh, we were off yesterday, so we missed the big event. Jake Arrieta allowed a run. Yes, he did at Wrigley Field. How about the first pitch uh, hit? He gave up. So that then Johnny Vandermeer out the window. 52 and two thirds consecutive scoreless innings at Wrigley Field. Did not quite get the record. Ray Herbert, the early 60s White Sox, he missed the record by an inning and two thirds. And he didn't have a quality start, too, because he only went five innings, which Joe Madden explained. Uh, well, I think we leave that record to Gibby because it's more important that we have him ready for. Uh, by the way, the I seem to remember he only went five innings against the Mets. <laughs> of course, that wasn't a Wrigley, but you know what I mean. That was Murph. Line the other way, foul. And Murph had a three run homer in the first inning that's against right, him. That's right? right. Hanging hook. Just inside uh, inside the foul pole. That's right. And and Pence takes ball four. So there's the third walk given up by Matz, who's kind of staggering his way through the latter stages of this game. After getting the huge lead, he's walked a batter in each of the subsequent innings. Well, um, Jerry Blevins up in the bullpen. I was talking about him using all his pitches. Certainly not the three-two changeup with with the 12th run lead. So now he'll face Brandon Belt, who's been on base twice, a broken bat infield hit, and a walk, and he socks one foul down the line. See the defense all the way over, completely empty on the right, left side of the diamond. Badly fooled Belt with a change up, and it's 0 and 2. Watch a stylish left hander in a Mets uniform wearing number 32, and I always go back to John Matlack. And, and when I think of Matlack, I think of a guy who never had a 12 0 lead. <laughs> That's right. I mean, he always was in a 1 0, 2 to 1, 3 to 2 game. Well, he threw a lot of shutouts himself, uh, but uh, you're right. He lost a, lost a lot of close games, a lot of 1 0 games, 2 1 games. And Belt foul tips it. Ploiecki hangs on. That's the second out. John had more of a perky jerk kind of motion. Stephen Matz, uh, you would teach every left hander to have this kind of motion. Little cutter, and that was the best one he threw all night. Yeah, Matlock had a more of a leg kick, hit the ball hit. incredibly well. And John went on to be a pretty good pitching coach, too, after his career was over. When I was in my first spring training with the Texas Rangers, he was on that team and and uh, I'll always remember no one could have been uh, any nicer than John Matlack was to me and I found out from others that just a nice guy. I mean in those days the older players would be pretty mean to you and you had to take it but uh, none of that from Matlack. Toby Tomlinson on deck to be a pinch hitter if Crawford keeps the inning going. And he hits one toward the hole just past Cabrera and Crawford has his second hit of the night. Hit number seven against Mats. Well, I think that uh, ensures that six innings is where he would like to get through because he won't see any more. Pitch count at 107 now. 17 yep. games in 17 days. Pitchers are going to be every fifth day now. And he'll, you know, he'll pitch on the fifth day as next start, but it'll be a day game, so it's almost like he has. Four and a half days. Tomlinson, the pinch hitter. Most pitches Stephen Matz has thrown in a big league start is 110. He did that last year 
in his major league debut against the Reds. So his next start will be getaway day right. to San Diego. Okay. Stephen Okert up in the bullpen. Looks like he'll be on in the bottom of the inning. One of three lefties in the Giants bullpen. We used to always look at the schedule and when it came out getaway day. Just don't let it be said. <laughs> I mean we to a man we'd all say it because Sid's games tended to last a little longer. Tomlinson hits one weekly. Walker's there to grab it. Side retired. So Steven Matz gets through six scoreless innings with a huge lead. Connor Gillespie stays in it, uh, comes in to play third base. He'll hit third. Kelby Tomlinson who pinch hit stays in at shortstop, and the new Giant pitcher is Stephen Okert, making his fifth big league appearance. Yeah, drafted in the fourth round by the Giants um, in the 2012 draft. Only 24 years old for this young left-hander getting a chance to pitch here in the Big Apple. He's a Sooner from the University of Oklahoma. Cespedes has been a boomer tonight. So Boomer versus Sooner. <laughs> Very good. Cespedes six RBIs in the third inning a two run single that made a three nothing and a grand slam that capped the 12 run inning. First met ever to drive in six runs in one inning. And now facing the lefty Stephen Okert. And he takes his big cut. Little breaking ball by uh, a Broadway. They just stayed on the inside part of the plate. And this ballpark big but not big enough for Cespedes. Broadway went three innings in relief gave up six runs and five hits but at least soaked up a couple more after yeah. that. Monstrous third inning. Grounded down to third Gillespie with his first chance. And he throws out Cespedes one away. Well, Gary, I want to say to you, happy birthday. In season, happy birthday. I got some cake here. It's awesome. Yes, that's uh, courtesy of my wife, Lynn. She's the best. And, you know, I guess I'll always remember the date of the 12 run inning. You, oh, that's right, on your birthday. And uh, there's, there's genius on this day because Jerry Seinfeld's also celebrating his birthday. Awesome. Way to go. Congratulations, my man. Did you leave out Michelle Pfeiffer? Oh, well, gee, well. <laughs> The um, <laughs> birthdays aren't the same as they used to be when we first started, are they, bro? You know, you, you want to slow them down a little bit. <laughs> you really do. But the cake is really good, <laughs> so it's a nice trade-off. Hey. I told Keith I keep trying to catch him, but just not going to catch up. No, we got we got to keep him ahead of us. He showed his age tonight, by the way. Not even a five and dive. Or five and fly. But uh, he got 12 in the bottom of the third. That's enough. I'm telling you, <laughs> he got out of here about 42 minutes later than we thought he would. <laughs> two and two to Duda. Well, we mentioned several times about the Giants starting pitching and. Um, you know Jake Peavy's had five outings and four of them have been rough. You know the last time the Giants were here. They had a kid throw a no hitter. That's right. Chris Heston he's in the minor leagues and he's pitching tonight in triple A. So it makes you wonder whether the Giants would contemplate making a move. Well when you have a veteran like Peavy and especially I mentioned before he last 14 starts last year he was 11 and four. Broken bat pop up. And I think part of it, uh, Gary, goes to where you are in the standings. You know, the, the Giants right now are, are tied with the Dodgers, if I'm, if I'm correct. You know, if you were far behind, uh, maybe you might think of a knee jerk reaction to making an immediate move. But, you know, you, you, sometimes the veterans will get a little more look, especially from Bruce Bochy. Who has a, a long history with uh, with Jake? Here's Neil Walker, who's two for three, had an RBI double in the 12 run third. Now getting a chance to bat right handed for the first time tonight. Oker throws a little bit like James Russell. 
No three quarter. Throws a little harder than James. Walker pops one up. Another chance for Panic. Side retired. So the Giants bullpen's retired 11 straight. A little too late. Cake. No, no, for new challengers. <laughs> I think you can beat them at Mets Trivia. Audition for the next Beat the Booth from home. For details on how to video audition online for Beat the Booth, check out SNY.TV today. Jerry Blevins into pitch in the seventh. Angel Pagan leads off of the Giants. You were mentioning that Blevins hasn't pitched since Sunday in Atlanta as Juan Lagares comes in to take Cespedes' spot. See his numbers this year. Uh, this is a good uh, time for Blevins to get a nice clean inning. You find it somewhat ironic that he hasn't allowed a hit to a right hand hitter this year as Pagan made a little late move to get out of the way. Well Blevins it, it, it's interesting when he first came here last season. We thought we'd only see him for a third of an out a game you right. know against the Harpers and the Freemans. Uh, but the way the bullpen has been formed now and the way it's kind of evolving or morphing he's more of an inning guy now and he's got a good change up to go with that curveball and cutter. So he can uh, he can pitch to both sides of the plate and that's really true of the entire Mets bullpen. Yeah, it really is. Terry unlike past years has really not been matching up the way he has in, in other seasons because he's got guys who can be crossover pitchers. Robles or Bastardo or anybody like that. Fouled away. Two and two to Pagan. Let's go downstairs to Steve Gelbs who's standing by with tonight's Mets starter. Gary, fun night to be the Mets starting pitcher. You get a lot of run support there. And, and Steven, you know, for you, obviously you'll take those 12 runs any day of the week. But how difficult is that just from a pitching standpoint to go back on the mound after that much of a delay? Yeah, it definitely is, especially a night like tonight, a little colder night. You get a little stiff, but I went down in, uh, in the cages here, threw a little bit, and was able to stay loose, and you know, I'll take it every time, like you said. How much do you do that during the inning? At what point do you say to yourself, this has been long enough, I need to go out there and throw some pitches in the cage? Um, there's no specific number. It's just uh, once you feel yourself getting a little tight, head into the cage, and there's got a little uh, massage thing down there to uh, just keep everything loose, and then I had to hit, so... When you go back out there on the mound, are you saying to yourself, you know what, I've got this cushion, let me pitch a little bit differently here and, and just try and pitch to contact a little more and get some quick outs? Yeah, definitely. I definitely want to stay around the zone. Uh, I got away from myself a little bit there, but that's the goal. You just want to pitch the contact and, uh, you know, make everything happen quick. Do you think about it all as just trying to get your work into trying some of the other pitches and, and making sure everything stays sharp for your next start? No, not necessarily while I'm out there. Um, I'm thinking in the in the moment there and just trying to go pitch by pitch overall Steven after that rough first start it's now three straight six plus innings you've only given up two earned runs in the last three starts what's been the biggest key here for you over this last stretch uh, I think it's just more of a focus like I said just going pitch by pitch and uh, not worrying about what just happened not worrying about what's going to happen just focus in on that that pitch in the moment and uh, that's it. Finally, what is the pitch for you that, that you think has been working best, and what at this point are you saying to yourself, this needs a little bit more work here? Uh, tonight my curveball wasn't where I wanted it to be, so I would say that needs most improvement, and uh, my changeup was, uh, was pretty good for me tonight, so I'm happy with that. Pagan just hit a home run, so that'll do it for this here with Stephen Matt. Stephen, we appreciate the time as always, and now let's send it back out to Gary. All right, thanks very much, Stephen. Thanks to uh, Stephen. Angel Pagan breaks up the shutout with his second home run of the year. As he takes Blevins deep, and now Jerry has given up a hit to a right hand bat. Pagan's taken the best at bats of anyone tonight. Uh, he's hit uh, three line drives, including that one over the fence. He loves coming back here, doesn't he? He really does. You know, that was great uh, listening to Stephen, though, talk about staying in the moment. And, and I think for folks at home, you know, y you think of that and you say, well, that makes total sense. Why wouldn't you stay in the moment every pitch? Or, it's uh, it's hard when you're a youngster you know you think of results more than the immediate thing that's happening right now you know you envision after the game shaking hands and a victory as opposed to boy I've got to throw strike one to Denard Span. once you get to that point it makes it a little easier when you have the kind of stuff that the staff has Span hits the curveball out to center and Ligaris patrolling there one out. 
Well, that takes us to tonight's starters brought to you by People's United Bank and two very different experiences. Mats was able to scatter seven hits over six innings. Jake Peavy never really had a chance. Well, he doesn't walk to anyone, so you knew he was out of sorts when he when he has five walks. Um, you know, Jake was trying to do what you do at a uh, later in your career, trying to use a lot of breaking pitches behind in the count. He just never could get um, ahead of the hitters. Here's Joe Panic, one for three on the night. And he takes the curveball outside. So Blevins pitching for the first time in five days gives up a home run to the first man to face him. Well, if you're going to get it out of the way, this is the kind of game to get it out of the way. You know, and I don't think we've, I know I haven't uh, talked about the bullpen enough. And, you know, this is a different kind of game, so it, it's probably the improper game to talk about how good they've been, but uh, they have been. 2.54 ERA out of that bullpen, and it seems like every night there's a different star. I think when this year began, you looked at the Mets' overall picture, and you said, starting pitching, okay. Yeah. Lineup should be okay. Deep. What you concern were concerned about was up the middle defense with you know, Sesmith playing center, which isn't his best position. Yeah. Cabrera and Walker, two newcomers, you didn't quite know what you were going to get. Um, so there was a question mark there, and I think that certainly for the first month of the season, that question has been answered in the affirmative. They've been terrific. And the other question was about the bullpen, and I don't think. You really knew exactly what the Mets had in front of Familia and how well Familia would bounce back after all those innings last year. All those innings last year, um, you know, some of the uh, um, good and bad that happened in the postseason. And let's not forget, Jay Reese had an historically great year. I mean, it was fantastic. So, you know, most most people uh, expect, well, he's just going to do it again this year. I mean, it's not that easy. Um, but he's got uh, uh, some weapons down there. I think Robles has improved um, his slider. That's great. I think Addison Reed has improved his slider. And we're talking about a guy that knows how to save games when he was in Chicago. Uh, Bastardo brings him a, a nice lefty with some power himself. Panic strokes that one to center, but right at Lagares. Two out. So, so far. And, and I think that and Jim Henderson's and Joe, and great, a great surprise my, I mean, when you think about where he was at the beginning of the spring. Yeah, my fault with uh, missing Hendu because he was he's been great uh, since since March 1st. He's been great. Um, and I think that they have an opportunity to even be better. And the reason I say that is that I think the staff at some point is going to eat up more innings. So they'll have to get less outs, which always makes it a little easier on a bullpen. Two out and nobody on. Connor Gillespie will bat for the first time. So Gillespie playing a few years ago for the White Sox. That's right. Yeah, he was there. Uh, they thought was going to be their answer at third base. He's an interesting player in that he's always hit for average, but not a lot of power. And you know how baseball they like to corner people to be able to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Well, the White Sox have a. Manager who was a pretty good third yeah. baseman in that regard. More than pretty good. He was <laughs> outstanding. Well, it's going to be interesting to see when Josh Edgen is ready, and that should be, you know, in the next week or two, where he fits with this bullpen or whether he's going to get extended time in the minor leagues when his rehab is done. Well, um, you know, considering that the last time that Josh was here, he had a little bit of a struggle. I'd like to see him go to Triple A, and and I'm sure he wouldn't. But I'm just, just see him have some innings of excellence before he comes here. Gillespie strikes out in the curveball. So Blevins, after giving up the home run, gets the next three. Still 12 to one. Dozen runs for the Mets in the third inning. I love the music. It's beautiful. And the hits just kept on coming. Capped off by one 
huge swing by Ioannis Cespedes for a grand slam and a 12 run inning, the biggest inning in Mets history. What'd you say in 55 years? So, I mean, you know, you could come to games for as long as you live and never see an inning like that again. I remember when the Mets had their first 10 run inning. That was in the late 70s. As Cabrera bangs one up the middle for a base hit. First hit the Mets have had since the Cespedes Grand Slam in that third inning. Second hit of the night for Cabrera. And that 10 run inning stood as the Mets' largest until um, they tied it against the Braves in 2000. That was memorable because they were down 8 to 1 going yeah, they, to the bottom they come of the back, eighth. right? Scored 10 runs in the bottom of the eighth. Piazza hit a three run homer to cap that inning. And then that stood until 2006 when they had that 11 run inning in Chicago. And that uh, brings us to the Mets box, box score presented by Jeep. Cespedes had the biggest piece of that 12 run inning. Driving in half the runs. And Conforto keeps on trucking. Lucky shoots one foul. I always laugh uh, whenever you talk about. I always call that my dark period because I didn't watch a lot of games then. But every time you talk about those great moments in the late 90s, 2000, Mike is already always at the center <laughs> of the big hit. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Piazza is going in the Hall of Fame this summer. It's a huge year for him, and you know, careers get defined by numbers. But having watched him over the course of his Mets career, I think more about moments. Yes. That's drilled to left field. Back goes Pagan. It's over his head and up against the wall. Cabrera to third. Polecki will use his discretion and hold at first base with a long single. Well, we saw the other night Polecki hit two balls hard, one for a base hit, one that was robbed by Billy Hamilton. So every game mixing in a hard hit ball this one I thought was going to be a double but Angel played it nicely off a field he knows a lot about. Here's Juan Lagares up for the first time. Came in on the double switch last inning hitting ninth in the order first and third and nobody out. I mean Mike had so many special moments as a yeah. man but there, there are certain ones that stand out the. Um, the home runs against Clemens, which led to the, um, you know, the bat throwing in, in the World Series. There was one that he hit against Trevor Hoffman to win a game at, at Shea when um, the Padres had not lost a lead after eight in like a hundred and some yeah. odd games in a row. The one he hit against Smoltz in Game Six of the League Championship Series. When the Mets had been down five nothing and they were fighting for their lives, yeah. he had a game tying home run, and Smoltz came out of the bullpen. And you know, and they just the one he hit against Billy Wagner in Houston late in the '98 season, yeah. when the Astros were fighting for a postseason berth, and uh, he tied up the game in the ninth inning against Wagner when nobody hit Wagner. And there's a strike three and one. There's no clutch, you know, in baseball. <laughs> No, he was uh, the great player. Is just I don't know if they turn it up a notch or they just remain the same while everything else around them runs amok. You know, they just be the, you know they let their greatness shine. That's line a base hit for Lagares. Now that'll bring in another run. Cabrera trots in three straight hits for the Mets to start at the bottom of the seventh, and it's now 13 to one. Well, that's good for Juan, you know, coming in defensively in a game that's out of control, and he comes in and keeps his wits about him, stays back on a breaking ball, and he gets himself a knock. Pretty good pitch from Oakert, but better swing by Lagares. So now Curtis Granderson is one for three in a walk tonight. Just trying to think who Oker throws like a little bit. You know who he throws like? 
A lefty that did a lot of great pitching for this team, Jeremy Affelt. Mm. Verizon trivia question for tonight which three pitchers have had a hundred or more strikeouts as a giant against the Mets. That's a good question. Oh the one guy in the 60s. Right. Yes. Marichal. Right. I also think one of the guys is in the ballpark right next to us. He has a chance right. Kruko. Maybe. He has a lot of wins against the Mets. 20 something wins. Yeah. Right. Well not all with the Giants though right his wins. Not all of them. Yeah. Because he was with the Cubs. Number, right? I mean, Lincecum or Kane, one of those guys could certainly be on yeah. the list. But all those great giant pitchers when Roger Craig was the uh, was the pitching coach. But Gerelts and, and all those guys. But I don't know how many starts they. Yeah, had. Gerelts was more out of the bullpen and. The guys that they had starting in those uh, day, Mike Lacoste and others, you know, weren't really Dave Dravecki, weren't really strikeout right. pitchers. Three and two to Granderson with nobody out. David Wright on deck. And he struck him out. That's the first out of the inning. The only guy I'm sure about is Marichal. Yeah. Uh, Mike Kruko is on the left there along with Dwayne Kuyper in the Giants booth. That's the two K's. Um, if you ever have a chance, folks, you got to listen to those guys. What a broadcast. Just outstanding. They're good buddies, so that comes across. Real knowledgeable, and they have a blast. Kruko has a little bit of Dennis Eckersley in him. Big time. In that he has a language that you have to kind of listen to. to you know to fully grasp. Yeah, he has like Kuko speak. I love it. <laughs> and you listen to him occasionally, and he's such a cool kind of dude. But occasionally, if he gets mad as an opposing player, he'll just you'll hear him say like, "Sit down, meat." <laughs> like you got to know what he means. <laughs> so Mike Kuko in his career against the Mets, 44 games, yeah, 39 starts. He was 22 and 7. <laughs> wow. I mean, he just had to toss his glove out there. <laughs> one and two to David Wright, who's one for two with a pair of walks tonight. So he had 22 wins against the Mets. His next most against any team was 13 against the Dodgers. He's like Randy Tomlin was with the Pirates in the early 90s, although he didn't, Tomlin didn't have nearly as distinguished a career. Right, it's out on strikes, so back to back strikeouts for Okert. So let's answer our Verizon trivia question. I'm going to still stay with Krug with 39 starts. Come on, Krug. Marichal, Kruko. No. Nope. Oh, wow. Perry. How can we get knocked at the Lord? Missed the whole affair. Bob Bolin. You know, 1968, the year of the pitcher. Yeah. A lot of pitchers had great years: Denny McLean and Bob Gibson and Louis Tiant. But look at the numbers for Bob Bolin in 1968. Okay, I will. Kruko, by the way, had 84 against the Mets as a Giant, 168 for his career. I'm gonna have to get on him about that. That's weak to win that many games, not have 100 Ks. So Bob Bolin, 1968, had a 1.99 ERA, a WHIP of 0 0.98. Wow. He only went 10 and 5 that year because the Giants weren't very good. Conforto hits a rocket right at panic on a couple of hops, and that retires the side. But the Mets tack on a run. Yeah, fun at the ballpark tonight when your team's up by a dozen. Just as we go to the eighth, Eric Campbell comes in to play left field. As Michael Conforto comes out, Logan Verrett will pitch. Versatile Verrett, he can pitch if it's a one-run game, and he can pitch if it's a 12-run game. But uh, he's had, uh, done a great job out of that bullpen also. Got a couple of victories in the series against the Reds Monday and Tuesday. Became the first Met to get 
wins on back to back days since Joe Smith back in 2008. I do have to say Joe Smith was one of my favorite Mets just an outstanding guy every time I see him in Los Angeles with the Angels if I'm doing a game out there he comes over and he talks and he's just really engaging great young kid. Trevor Brown up for the second time took over for Buster Posey behind the plate. So Jerry Blevins worked an inning in relief allowed the home run to Angel Pagan that broke up the shutout. Oh there's a nice shot of our cameraman in center field. You ever try that. Run right. camera. I have. I have. It's, it's 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 really hard. Unless you're at the camera that Al has. Well, That's that, easy there. He doesn't have to do it. But anything. all the other ones are very difficult. Oh, Al doesn't. He doesn't do anything. He just stands there and takes the same shot for nine innings. Well, it's hard to take different shots when your hands are full of of edible products. You mean like gummy bears, <laughs> Swedish fish? There's Al in front of our booth. Hey, listen, we make fun of him. No one loves Al more than us. The best. Cabrera on the backhand and the quick toss off the bag. Duda slaps the tag on Brown for the first out. Is that the first errant throw I've seen from Cabrera? I've missed a couple games now. He's had a couple that have been offline, but you have plenty of time. Duda had plenty of time to adjust and make the play. By the way, we said we'd keep an eye on Michael Fulmer. Making his major league debut for the Tigers tonight. He's through five innings. He's allowed two runs, seven hits, has a four to two lead in Minnesota. Slowly hit down to third. And David Wright makes a low throw, and Duda can't handle this one. Survives the meeting with Penta, comes off the bag, but they say he had not made any move to make a turn, and so he is safe. Well, David. Doesn't rush this throw. He just doesn't get anything on it. And a tough bounce. And Duda tries to make the play. Pence is not a small man now. Pence is 6'4, 200 pounds. And he ran into the wall of Duda. <laughs> like Wall of Voodoo. <laughs> right? Exactly. Mexican radio, Wall of Voodoo? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Zappa. Almost got zapped. So they're going to score that air on David Wright. A one out base runner Brandon Belt takes a strike. Gregor Blanco the last man left on the Giants bench is out on deck to pinch hit. Third error of the year for David Wright. Drive around the majors presented by Chevy. Matt Caesar a grand slam in the bottom of the eighth as the Cubs beat the Braves this afternoon. We told you about Michael Fulmer's debut. Juan Nicasio pitched well for the Pirates tonight as they beat the Reds. Not pictured there. Adam Conley for the Marlins as a no hitter through five innings against Milwaukee. Wow. The lefty, right? Yep. Marlins playing wonderfully right now. Of course, this is their first game now since finding out that they'd be without D. Gordon for 80 games. Who's going to play most of the time Dietrich. I would think Derek Dietrich uh, maybe they slide Prado over there a little bit. Yeah. OK. All right. They've got they still have Donovan Solano right. Yeah. And their farm system. Lucky. I'm going to dig down in the dirt. Always have to think because Jonathan's the catcher. Right. Donovan's the second baseman. I think they're both with the Marlins now oh, right. Yeah. But you know give the Marlins credit forget about the, the Gordon suspension to go to L.A. and sweep four games for the from the Dodgers. Yeah. That was big time. Well they hung a seven mark on uh, Kershaw right. Right. Rallied late to win last night actually D. Gordon um, induced a balk that uh, provided a key run in that win last night. And I guess what happened was that Gordon decided to drop the drop his appeal of the suspension yes. which I guess had been in progress for a while. He did it after the game. Right and that's why it was announced at you know 120 Eastern time this morning because yeah, it was the game was 10 15 in L.A. 
Lagara says this one measured. And Belt is retired, two out. And that Gregor Blanco will be the pinch hitter. Is that. Uh, who, who is that in tribute to? Is that is that a. I don't know. It's got to be some kind of a Giants thing. Yeah, definitely a giant thing. I, I just don't know. Crazy. For, crazy. For years, everybody was wearing the the panda hats. That's right. When Sandoval was there. Well, I know they're they're um, selling the kind of dread hats for when Johnny Cueto pitches no. now. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, Giants uh, fans that have made it to the ballpark tonight. You know, I mean, they've been the best uh, the last six years. Well, you still got the residue That's of right. fans from when the Giants played in New York, so you have a little bit of carryover there. And then, you know, three championships in the last six years. This young man on the right probably was at the Polo Grounds at some point. That's a different kind of Giants. I would go with the extra large, just my view personally. <laughs> It's like he wandered over from the draft. <laughs> yeah. oh, did you see that outfit? I mean, come on. Well, I mean, if you if you're going to get the big money to be drafted in the first round, you could at least afford a full shirt. <laughs> Lined over Duda, base hit for Blanco. Pence will go to third. Blanco's going to try for two, and he'll. Slide in safely with a double. So a pinch hit double for Gregor Blanco. And the Giants have runners in second and third. The ball is supposed to be away, hung on to it just a tad too long, and it drifted on down and in, which Keith has said to you folks many times down and in is death for the pitcher, the left handed hitters. So now Kelby Tomlinson will bat for the second time. Tomlinson came up as a pinch hitter in the sixth, grounded out, stayed in the game. Adam Conley is now through six innings with a no hitter intact in Milwaukee. Marlins are up five nothing in that game. Justin Bohr has two home runs. What's your first thought when you hear that a pitcher's got a no hitter through six? Your I first mean, thought when he pitches exactly. <laughs> Good stop by Plowecki that saves a run. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Jeep now celebrating its 75th anniversary a lifetime of freedom in a world of adventure. Verrett has bounced that slider a half dozen times and Plowecki has been up to the task. The answer on Adam Conley through six innings 81 pitches. That's a problem. Well, we'll get a chance for seven and perhaps eight, nine could be an issue, particularly a a young pitcher who they value highly. Yeah, you'd have to uh, have an easy seventh inning. I think that's the key. Sonia Bastardo up in the Mets bullpen. Two one from Verrett and Tomlinson goes after the fastball away. Two and two. Full count. Tomlinson with those glasses looks like he should be in Silicon Valley with a startup. <laughs> 3 2 from Verrett, and he misses wide ball four to load the bases. So an error, a double, and a walk have filled the bases for the Giants in the top of the eighth. And Angel Pagan. Who homeward to break up the shutout in the seventh? We'll get another crack. Mm -hmm. 
Angel hit a home run as a right hand batter against Jerry Blevins. Now he gets a chance to bat left handed against Logan Verrett. Two home runs now and 12 RBI on the season for Angel. Both of his home runs have come batting right handed. Brought the poncho, brought the blanket, brought the hat, brought the hood. Very well prepared. <laughs> Bases loaded, two out, and Pagan takes a knee high strike. So Pagan had a lot of moments. You were talking about Piazza before, certainly not the moments that Mike had, but he had a lot of good moments as a Met. What's the one you'll remember? Oh, that's easy. It's the walk off home run he hit in our laps. That's right, in the porch. I was thinking that and then the inside the park home run to left center. Rounds one right and Walker and that retires the side. So Verrett gets in and out of trouble in the top of the eighth. Nice hat. <laughs> in game of this series Jacob deGrom coming off a of victory in his first start back from paternity leave. We'll go up against Matt Kane. Our coverage begins tomorrow afternoon at 3:30, right here on SNY. And there are your city probables. Sunday's game, a marquee matchup, weather permitting. Noah Syndergaard against Madison Bumgarner, one o'clock Sunday afternoon. Gregor Blanco stays in the game in left field, and the veteran left-hander Javier Lopez will pitch the bottom of the eighth. Well, 38 uh, years old, but he's played a big part in their World Series championships. But he's having a hard time. Lefties are hitting 500 off him, but he's retired all the righties. Just opposite of what usually his role is. Eric Campbell up for the first time. Took Cespedes' spot in the batting order. You in his Cespedes and his return to the lineup tonight. Merely drove in six runs in one inning. First met ever to do that. As the kid. Javi Lopez, 31 appearances in the postseason. Many of them for one batter at a time. <laughs> Three and out to Campbell. Duda and Walker to follow for the Mets in the bottom of the eighth. It's been a walkover since the third when the Mets had a record setting 12 run inning. There's a strike. Jake Peavy took it on the chin, two innings plus, six runs, four hits. Mike Broadway, three innings, six runs, five hits. Steve Oker, two innings, one run, three hits. It's been that kind of night for the Giants. We came in a game over 500. Having just swept a series from San Diego, but it's been all Mets tonight. And there's a strike three and two as the Mets are on the verge of their seventh straight win. One of the uh, here's a three two, and Campbell strikes out one away. The Big Poppy farewell tour uh, <laughs> got itself a. A rousing ovation tonight. Two run home run off Delton just hands us in the bottom of the eighth. Boston beats the Yankees four to two. Wow. Here's Duda. Two walks, a ground out, and a pop up. He's 0 for 2 on the night. Red Hot Phillies have the bases loaded in the bottom of the 10th against Cody Allen and the Indians, tied 3 to 3. So the Phillies, who've won 6 of 7, could be on the verge of another win. They've been a very nice surprise over the first month of the season. They're playing hard for Pete McCannon. I think the biggest, not the biggest surprise, because they do have some talented young arms, but that they're performing at such a high level here early in the season. It'll be interesting to see how they can survive losing one of the veteran arms in that rotation with Morton going down for the year. Duda gets jammed and Panic makes the play. Check it, that was Gillespie, the third baseman, who made the play. Two out. Geico Sports Night tonight after the post game. We'll have the draft news and the hockey news and maybe a little baseball too. All on Geico Sports Night tonight after the post game. So two out and nobody on. Now Dylan Walker is two for four, a single, a double. He's driven in a run. Let's have 12 hits tonight. Eight of them came in that 12 run third inning. I mean, it really felt at some point that that inning might not ever end. 
what do they say uh, your offense is going well if you hit for a half hour well they hit for 45 minutes. Hey. Was it who said if you keep on hitting you can live forever. <laughs> Wilmer Flores standing on deck. Will pinch it if Walker keeps the inning going. Well, what did we say earlier? The, the Giants have won their series at City Field each of the last five years. Right. So the Mets trying to get the upper hand in this one. Well, it's going to be interesting to watch the matchup on Sunday uh, because not only are both pitchers just fantastic, um, Bumgarner, of course, has done so much in his career, young career already, both good hitters also. Grounded toward the hole. Gillespie snags it and throws out Walker to end the inning. On to the ninth we go. Mets three outs away from a lopsided win. Nicest man I know, Gary Apple. Isn't he? Very, very kind. Gentlemen. Antonio Bastardo will try and secure the final three outs for the Mets. Facing the top of the Giants batting order, Denard Spann, who's one for three in a walk tonight. Giants have nine hits tonight, but they're only run on an Angel Pagan home run. You know, just looking at the Mets offense, you know, Cespedes, of course, jumps off the page. Conforto jumps off the page. And the quiet man, steady in, steady day in and day out, Cabrera. You know, a couple more hits, a couple more runs scored, a couple RBI. He had as big a hit as anybody yeah. did in that big inning. The two run double that made it six nothing. Really broke the game open. Two and one to span with Panic and Gillespie to follow. Steven Matz went six, no runs, seven hits, three walks, four strikeouts. And a chance for his third straight win. If uh, if he gets the win, it certainly seems likely. Mats will be seven and one in his major league career. And ten starts. Span pops one up. Duda over near the railing. Make sure everybody stays on their feet. <laughs> two and two. Well, Adam Conley now through seven innings with a no hitter intact, right at a hundred pitches. So, so he threw 19 in the seventh. He said 81, right? So Don Mattingly with some serious decision making, or none at all, maybe. You know, I, I don't know. I don't, you know, I, you and I were talking the other day that the Chicago Cubs have a protocol now for their pitchers if they get close, what kind of game it was, how, how many pitches under duress, on how they're going to let their guys go if they have a no hit and no hitter in place. I think every club would. Who are trying to do that themselves? Yep. Well, especially if you have young pitchers yeah. like an Adam Conley, probably no way he gets a chance to throw a no hitter tonight. But we'll see. Three and two to Span leading off in the ninth, and ball four. Well, for a Mets staff that has walked fewer batters than any staff in the league, that's five walks tonight. About the only tarnish on an otherwise spotless night for the Mets. 11 walks, I think, in the game. Now, Joe Panic, who's hit a couple of line drives his last time up, both into outs, one for four on the night. By the way, the Phillies did not score after loading the bases in the bottom of the 10th, so they're on to the 11th, 3 3 with the Indians. So, Panic was a 2011 draft pick of the San Francisco Giants. So, does that tell you that he played the first game ever played in this ballpark? With St. John's. Yeah, yeah St. John's Jefferson. Yeah. yeah, okay. Came out of John Jay High School in East Fishkill. Grew up in Hopewell Junction. Went to St. John's. Where's that, Gary? Give me, give me a clue. Where's uh, Hopewell that's, Junction? I think that's uh, Putnam County. Okay. 
Maybe Duchess. Pulled down to first. Nice backhand by Duda. Out at second, and Cabrera will hold on to it. Bastardo probably wasn't going to get there. <laughs> so they get the force on span for the first out. SNY Super Slow Motion brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State Dealers. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. Well, that was a big play, too, in that inning. Hunter Pence ran to the place that he thought the ball was going to be, and it kind of drifted to his right and just off the end of his glove. It was off the bat of Granderson and made it seven to nothing. One reason I say that is that we always see him making great plays out there. Panic at first with one out. Connor Gillespie, the batter, struck out in his only at bat in the seventh. Started working for the first time since Monday night when he had a his first bobble in a while. Faced two batters, gave up a walk and a base hit. But before that, he had really been locked in. That big 12. First time they've had to roll that out in flushing. I can't believe they have it. Right? You have to take it from the final score, kind of. Uh... I wonder with the hand-operated scoreboards, will they actually have to have? Yeah, like numbers Wrigley, on little boards, like Wrigley Field. How high do they go? I mean, do they uh, have Fenway a, Park. Do they have a 15, a 16, a 20? <laughs> At some point, they're writing on a piece of paper and inserting <laughs> it there, right? <laughs> I mean, what's the biggest inning in Major League history? Was it 19, I think? I don't know. Don't know that. I don't think I've ever seen a dozen uh, runs put up in an inning. I know. I, I mean, you could. The Mets next 55 years might not do that, right? Well, they hadn't done it in the first 54. <laughs> oh, and 0 2 to Gillespie. And he pops this one up. This will stay in play for David Wright. Two out. So the Giants are down to their final out of the night. Trevor Brown will come to bat. Brown is 0 for 2, struck out and grounded out. After coming on for Buster Posey, who left once this became a lopsided game. Eric Collins crew on the verge of their seventh straight win. Remember last year early in the season the Mets had an 11 game winning streak. That got them to 13 and 3 to start the year. Well, like the Giants had in 2010 and really 2010 then 2012. You know if you lost that first game you had to face another monster the next night. And that's what the Mets have now. You know they get the first game with their youngster mats and they get the Grom coming and then Syndergaard. Just doesn't let up for the other team. Yeah, it's kind of like facing the 86 Mets. <laughs> you know so you, you know you're going to get a quality out and give your team a chance. That's a, a good thing. The all time record for runs in an inning is 18 but that was done in 1883 okay, so the good. modern record is 17 by the Red Sox in 1953. The modern National League record is 15 by the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1952. Wow they came close. So they were they were pretty close. There you go. Gary take care of those balloons. Thank you Juan. Party pooper. Guys, got to figure out how to get rid of the string. I'm glad they're celebrating out of the uh, the M and M seats. <laughs> and there's ball four to Brown. So two walks in the inning for Bastardo and six for the night for the Met pitchers. Six for each team now. Twelve 
total. And so Hunter Pence will get another crack at it. Pence is 0 for 3 in a walk tonight. Survived dropping a fly ball in right field. Survived smacking into Lucas Duda at first base. And here comes another balloon. Nice shot, guys. <laughs> I mean, where did that balloon come from that it's sailing down the Nikon side in center field? And now it's in shallow right center. I think we can ignore it and play around it, don't yeah, you? Yeah, make it an obstacle. If there's a fly ball to right, see if you can break it and catch it at the same time. You know, there was a time until the 1940s where fielders would leave their gloves that's on the field. That's right. And somehow the fielders were able to work their way around it. Oh good the Hunter Pence signs are back. He double dips. As an imaginary friend. He uses a nightlight. <laughs> nice. Doesn't everyone? Oh two. And did he go? He did not. And we still play on. Marlins were just retired in the top of the eighth, so we'll see who takes the mound for them in the bottom of the eighth with Adam Conley working on a no hitter. One and two to Hunter Pence, and Conley is still in there. One two from Bastardo, and Pence keeps it alive. On a day when all of the talk was about their suspended second baseman, Mr. Conley's trying to change the dialogue. Remember also that they played a late game in L.A. last night and flew to Milwaukee, two time zones away, which is another thing baseball has to work on. The schedule is just outrageous and getting worse every year. It, it is. Seems. Now the one two and Pence takes away two and two. Who did I see played a night game travel two time zones and played a day game. It's gross what they're doing it's to the players. Ridiculous. I mean I'm tired and all I got to do is put the right tie on. <laughs> you know at some point. <laughs> two and two to hundred Pence. And he struck him out, and the ball game is over. Antonio Bastardo gets the final out on an historic night for the Mets as they put up their first ever 12 run inning with Ioana Cespedes driving in half the runs in that 12 run third. And the Mets walk past the Giants 13 to 1. Well, one of the most impressive innings I've ever seen as a, a player or a broadcaster. Six runs driven in by Cespedes, including that grand slam home run. Conforto again. Uh, with a double and a couple of RBIs and a Strubel Cabrera. Two hits, two runs scored, and two RBIs. So the Mets have now won seven in a row, 12 of their last 14. They improved to 14 and seven on the season as they grab the first game of the series from the Giants. Here's tonight's game summary presented by Jeep. Yoana Cespedes returned to the lineup with authority tonight. His third career Grand Slam capping that 12 run inning, the biggest inning in franchise history. For every Mets win, the Mets organization is proud to contribute $2,500 to Northwell Health and the Katz Institute for Women's Health. For more information, visit NorthwellHealth.com slash KIWH. This win brings the total contribution so far this season to $35,000. Stephen Matt, six scoreless innings for the win, and the bats did the rest. And Hunter Pence still has friends. 13-1 <laughs> Mets win it. More coming up.